Good evening, everyone. Thank you guys for coming out this evening. Um, today, I would like to call the order, the regular meeting um, scheduled for August 7, 2023, and the time is 6.48 p.m. Please call the roll. Good morning. Good evening, everyone. Trustee Norwood. Trustee Stan Brown. Present. Trustee Tammy Brown. Present. Trustee Jason House. Present. Trustee Andrew Holmes. Here. And Trustee Belcher is absent today. We have a quorum. All right. Um, next, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm. All right, if you always thank, continue to stand, I'm going to have uh, William Moore lead us in prayer. Precious Father, we thank you for the time that we gather. Lord, we ask for your grace and your mercy, Father, to be upon us as we meet with your people. Father, continue to lead these leaders. Father, continue to give us patience, perseverance, courage, and passion for your people to fulfill your mission. We thank you for it. Lord. Continue to bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, next on the agenda is public comment. If anybody have any public comment, you can come to the podium. You have three minutes. Hello. that it actually happened. Uh, an officer told me that it happened. That's how I knew that it happened. He told me that was the reason that he was so upset with me. Someone came in with my ID. It was the people, one of the people who are living in my house. I've been explaining to Dalton police for months. This is my house. All of my things are in my house. You know, whatever. Um, July 8th, I go to the house with one of my electricians. Um, an incident happened. The people inside shot at us. I called the police. They did absolutely nothing. I went to the station, the police station, the clerk, she's shaking her head at me as soon as I walk in. This is how many times they've seen me because I've come to them for help this many times. Excuse me if I'm getting emotional, but it's hard. So I've come, come to them for help this many times. This is how much they see me. They recognize me when I walk in the door. Excuse me. So I get there. Um, they wouldn't let me file the police report. The following Monday, I went to the state's attorney. I told them what happened. She called someone at Dalton Police and sent me there to do my police reports. I go in there. I, um, uh, the officer, the um, person that she told me to see was Price. I didn't know his you know, status. I didn't know if he was a detective lieutenant. I didn't know what he was. So when I went in, I did what the ASA told me and asked for Detective Price. The um, clerk is like, Mm -mm. We don't have a detective price. Well, you know, you have an officer here by the name of price. You know, that's who I'm coming to see. He's expecting me. So she tells him, you know, I'm here or whatever. Even after the shooting, when I went back to the police station, she shook her head at me and said, this is a landlord tenant issue. Nobody's going to talk to you. I had to leave. That's why I went to the ASA. 
So that happened. Um, I go back to file the police report. Frazier is the officer who gets ready to initiate the report. I'm being sexualized. He's talking about my body. He's telling me all of these things about, we had conversations about threesomes. I'm going with the conversation because again, I need these police reports done. I've been waiting too long for it. So however it goes, he has another officer do the police reports for me. I get the police reports done. Fine. I'm out of there, out of that situation. But everything that's been going on, these people have been coming to my job. Harass I'm a business owner in Calumet City in the mall. They've been coming to my job harassing me. We've had fights, several physical altercations. I go July 19th to get a restraining order against these people and get possession of my home. I get that. The judge grants me that. I take it to Dalton police. She, they say there's nothing they can do. Okay, I give it time. Another day, they probably get served. Maybe they're out, whatever. I go to my house, get into a confrontation with these people. The Donna police take me to jail for home invasion and two counts of aggravated battery at my own house. It kept me in jail from July 20th to the 23rd. That's when they released me to the county. I got out in 17 hours. The 23rd, I get home to my kids. I have two small children. I'm basically living from hotel to hotel, out of my car. All of my things are in my car. I pull up to the hotel in the neighboring city. The police swarm my car. I got my kids with me. My daughter's crying. They, oh. I just wanted to share with you all everything that's happening. They ended up taking my car and everything in it. I have nothing now. Get that, uh, Excuse me. That. Miss? If you could wait until after the meeting and then I will come and address and make sure we talk to the chief of police in the DC to make sure you are made whole. All right, you're welcome. Come on, come on up. Uh <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor, Trustees of Dalton, Doyle, D-O-Y-L-E, Landry, L-A-N, D as in David, R-Y. So many of us in the Julian class of 1988 are wearing orange today in memory of Dr. Jerry Weems. Last week has been really, really hard, and I show people an email from our last meeting that we were supposed to meet today at 10 a.m. and you have to understand why that meeting will never happen. So with that the premise and in remembrance of Jerry to us. The president of the NAACP Far South Suburban Chapter, Gary, G-A-R-Y, Dingle, D-I-N-G-L-E, was standing next to me on Wednesday, July 26th at the business located at Sibley and Woodlawn, currently Walgreens. When the white woman, whose name is on the door, called the police after refusing me a Ventra pass twice. I'm using the three and a half minutes wisely because I'm giving you context. So since the NAACP president saw it and a, um, Officer was called, and for the record, uh, Chief Collins, both officers did their job in accordance to the law. As a Marine Corps veteran, I have no problem with them. Since that time, I have been in and out that store multiple times where the black employees refuse to call the police. I have the receipts, and by accordance with the state's attorney for Kane, DuPage, and will that white woman will be charged with a class four felony for filing a police report, false police report. Why am I bringing that up in relation to Dalton? Uh, about two months ago, because some things are personal, just some things are personal. And as I have shared with that white woman, the only thing that a white woman can do for me is use her finger and point and show me where a black woman went. That is simply because I grew up in the Pentecostal church founded by Mrs. Mamie Till Mobley. So as I close, that Walgreens could close by May 31st of 2024. 
not because of me, because Walgreens, as you all now you all now know, it will close 10 to 16 stores within the Chicagoland area. And if you're Walgreens looking up, walking up Sibley, which one will you open? Keep open. Calumet City, a 24 hour pharmacy or the one in Dalton. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Michael Ross. I am a Dalton resident since uh, 2001, and my complaint is in regards to price gouging. On last week, my son's car was towed by JTS Towing on that afternoon at around 2 o'clock. We go and retrieve the car on Thursday morning at around 10 o'clock, and I got all the proper paperwork that he told me to go get, came back, rang the bell, talked to the attendant, asked them what the price was, and I was charged $755 for to get my car back, and it hasn't been less than a day. This type of price gouging shouldn't be allowed in Dalton. It's not reasonable. It's not fair. And I'm not understanding how someone can take your car after an accident, tow it away. The car was drivable, and we went and got the car. And when I get there, less than a day, two seventy-five for a tow. And then I got all these other little strange fees, processing fees, fifty dollars, winching two hundred and fifty dollars. Some dog on uh, was this clean up oil dry, fifty dollars, thirty dollars for a fuel surcharge, hundred dollars for storage. I'm like, what are we doing? Seven hundred and fifty-five dollars. That's not. That's not. That's not right, Mayor. No business should be in our in our in our in our village and treat residents like that. It ain't right, and they need to go. And I need it on the ballot. It needs to go. If I gotta go get a petition to get them to go, I'll go get a petition to get them to go because no no family should go through that. That's a lot of money. Seven hundred and fifty five dollars for less than a day. Less than a day, and that's my problem. How can that be happening? How can it be happening? We are all Dalton residents. There's no way we should be allowing ourselves to be treated that way. And that's what I came here to ask. I'm asking for this to be looked into because this is wrong. This is wrong. Thank you. Mayor, may I? Mayor, may I? Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. What's the name of that uh, touring place? JTS. Where is it located? Okay. okay, at the, at the end of the meeting, um, I'll meet with you along with the chief because it's me and the chief have been talking about trying to get an ordinance, and this is what it's about. So uh, we'll meet with you. Yeah, we, we're, we're talking about getting to a stiff one, and this is what we're talking about. Um, we'll get into a few details after this, but this is just what we're talking about. Thank you. All right, you can come up. Good evening, everyone. I'm not sure if this is the place to address this, but today I got a water bill for $1,000. I've been a resident of Dalton for three years. Consistently, same bill. So today when I came, because I'm like, this can't be my bill, came to over here to the young lady, and she was saying, oh, it's been an estimate bill for three years. I can't see me getting an estimate water bill for three years. Now, all of a sudden, getting a $1,000 bill stemming from, I think it says April through June. I need to know how is this regulated? And I was told about a yellow card that I've never heard about since I've lived in Dalton, that they were saying you can write down off the meter yourself and drop it in the box. And I'm like, is this something new? Because I'm like, I got a welcome packet when I came. None of that is in the welcome packet. And she was like, well, it's just an estimate bill. So now it's the real bill. So Basically, you will have to pay it because we're starting to shut off waters now if you don't get on the payment plan. And it's like, I just got this bill today. How would you start shutting off waters if people are not on the payment plan? Something has to be done about that. And then there's another lady walked in talking about she had a 5000 How can you have a $5,000 water bill in Dalton? Now, I've lived in Chicago before coming out here, and I've never, even with water in my grass every day, 
never had a bill that amounted to this much. And I'm just trying to figure out who it is that I need to talk to so that I can see what can happen with this bill because I'm not paying a thousand dollar bill for something that, and she said that, oh, we're short staff. So we ain't have nobody to come out checking the water bill. The meter's outside. I don't have to be on for nobody to check the meter for the water. So how is it that nobody has been checking the bills all this time for me to get an estimate for three years? So I just need some type of communication from somebody who I need to speak with so they can re address this or something. Yes. So you can see why Anita after the meeting. She's right okay. here. She's the Thank director you. of water. All right. So I've been living in Dalton for a little over two years now and um, haven't seen any results. The only results I have been seeing is um, over there on um, Greenwood as far as the new business establishment is getting built. And the street of Sibley, it, lo it looks like a landfill. Uh, let me see. What else? It's so much, so much that's not getting done that I have been seeing. Like, it's ridiculous. I don't see street sweepers come around once a year in the summertime. Uh, water bill, violations. I look like I'm in the transportation department, so I know there's a lot of little things that's going on that should be done that's not getting done. And... I don't want to speak bad about no anyone, but your administration is not doing anything for the village of Dalton. Nothing. Absolutely. I haven't seen any results. So that's all I have to say. Come on up. Hello, everybody. Hi. Yeah. I'm here for a totally different reason than everybody else. Uh, my name is Lavelle Applewhite. For those who do not know me in here, I'm the president of the Dalton Bears. Youth organization, we do football right up the street. Uh, I'm just here to ask for financial support. I mean, that's really it. We got a lot of things going on this year. Football has come back. Uh, we've done a really good job of supporting the kids within our organization the last couple of years, especially since COVID had ended and we started coming back out. Um, we're getting more kids out now. So it's just the fact there are things that we need to get for kids. We need to get um, new equipment for them. Um, we're actually trying to take them on a trip this year at the end of the season because of the world opening back up. And we look like we got uh, pretty good prospects this year over there. So I'm just looking for financial support, some uh, a little bit of help, too, because we do have uh, families that can't really afford it. They do what they do. We have one fundraiser that we do this year coming up but anything else that we can get and any help that we did come to this this board uh probably about three years ago and actually help and they, they they were able to at least help us financially then so i came to ask for financial help for the dalton bears okay make sure you put a proposal in like you always do i definitely will yeah. um yeah. No, that's why i came fellas i mean and ladies thank you <laughs> Good evening. Uh, those that don't know me, my name is Adam Dodson. Uh, I'm the Economic Development Director for Sanders Law Firm. Uh, I had put a small letter and a resolution on there. Obviously, that's not for tonight's first discussion, but I just wanted to present it to you to hopefully that you guys can think about putting it on the agenda and make it have a discussion to whether or not to give a renewal for the Class 8 or not. Um, just, just as an aside, Thornton Township, the uh, uh, reassessment just came out Saturday. So maybe, maybe many of your residents and your business may need to look at their uh, assessments and, f and see where things are at. From what we're seeing, uh, there's a lot of changes. Some properties have doubled, some have gone down, but please everyone take a look at your reassessments because obviously this is your opportunity to appeal uh, your taxes this time of year. So there's 30 days to do that. So that's all I have to say this evening. Okay. Thank you. If anybody else have anything to say, can you line up here? Because we're going to cut the public comment off. All right. So let's go. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor, Trustees, Tom Folk. Uh, it's now been a little over a month since my last appearance here. This is my 128th uh, town hall meeting, second in this great city. 
And of course, your honorable mayor, I'm here to ask about the business license renewals, specifically for 44 Sibley Boulevard. Uh, we have done, I, I personally have done 106 communications with mayor's office, Mr. Moore here physically, emails, phone calls to Mr. Delgado, 76 of them to be exact, without a single call return. My question is tonight, and I like tonight's vibe because it seems to be interactive, where, you know, questions back and forth are being answered. I was wondering how long, how much longer we have to wait. And if anybody has an answer, this is the renewal of business license. I just want to be clear. Is this talking about a liquor license? Because it, it's overall. Say, yeah, it, it, so it the liquor license. It. Okay. It so is. that's in the attorney's hands. I think I answered this last meeting. Um, mm -hmm. It's still in the attorney's hand. The attorney will be reaching out to anybody with a liquor license. Your Honor, I, I've called him 76 times. Not a, he said he would uh, have an, a decision for us three weeks ago. We have, and, and then you said something last meeting that some of these businesses owe money or back taxes. That's correct. If there's anything this business owes, we will triple what is owed. That's correct. There's, there's, do you know if that particular business owes any money? I do not know that at this moment. That's why I've been an attorney. How can so I get attorney, a hold of Mr. Delgado? You, you want me to respond or no? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sorry. So the attorney will respond. He will tell you guys what to do. Um, more than likely you will have a hearing and then you will know um, the status of your business. Uh, for those that keep coming to the podium, this is strictly about liquor license. We have not denied your business license, but if you have liquor in your establishment, um, everything's being looked at with anybody with a liquor license. So that's what we are with liquor establishment. Anybody holding a liquor license in Dalton. Thank you. And do you have any idea when so Mr. Delgado will get back? I just asked him that. So there is that his leisure? It's in his, it's in his hands, and when he get mm -hmm. done with his investigation, he will call you. It's more okay, like an email app. Sure. Mm -hmm. We're not on equal footings, and we don't want to be uh, uh, victimized or, or uh, have revenge extended on us on this business license because we're speaking out, man. We don't want to be singled out at the end because it's not why uh, uh, this license was not renewed. It's how the other licenses were renewed. Nothing, nobody explained to us what triggered this special review, but it's under review. Nobody's telling us what money's being owed. We just want this license renewed, that's all. We're not lawbreakers. It's a very nice place. This, this town should be proud of this gas station. No, no uh, violations. Been there for 25 years. No back taxes. We just want to move things along, that's all. And I'll be back next month, or will Mr. Delgado return his calls? I've been speaking of Brandon every day. That's his secretary. That's how old this is getting. I'm sorry for my attitude, but people are losing their jobs over this. Businesses are closing down. The town folk are, are suffering as well. These are taxes that could be paid to the city. But thank you for your time, Your Honor, and I hope we get this moving along. Good evening. My name is Demarcus Craigley, 26 year resident. Uh, I'm also a public work supervisor, but I'm not here as the public work supervisor. I'm here as a resident. Um, I just want to say that uh, this administration is doing um, a great job. Uh, yes. I want to boost the morale up. Um, there's trees, yep. there's um, light poles are being put up, trees are being trimmed, vacants are being taken care of. Um, we're moving in an orderly fashion way. Um, can't do everything in one year. Can't do everything in four years. Give us that eight years, we're gonna take it, That's take right. it for what we know, all right? <laughs> uh, we cleaning it up here. Um, again, everyone that I know of is doing their job, especially code enforcement, um, as, as far as public works as well. Reason I know is because I, I get a ticket too, I'm a resident. I mean, sometimes I can fall out of compliance, but the job is to stay in compliance. Um, I think that we've been falling. We haven't been in compliance in maybe 20 years, and it's kind of taking some people off. But, I mean, it's for the better. Build a uh, better village of Dalton. That's all I can say. Thank you all. Yep, thank you. Good job. Good evening, Mayor, trustees, residents. My name is George Messier, the owner of Pablo's Cafe and Bar, located 1115 East Sibley. 
I'm here tonight for the same reason I came three weeks ago for the last meeting. I'm asking about my license. No answer. We came to this village hall every single day. Called the attorney maybe more than 100 times. No answer. So when can we have an answer for this? I mean, we've been closed for a month now. This place, we have to pay $6,200 a month between rent and all expenses, and we've been closed. You close us down for not having a local license. You have all my papers since April. We're in August. How long this process is going to take? That's my question. I mean, can we have like a meeting between you, Mayor, the business owner, with the trustees, and we go through this? The trustee has nothing to do with liquor licenses. Okay. Who we need to, can we sit with you? Yes. And I just answered that with the last gentleman who has a gas station who sells liquor. So everybody's being evaluated. So the attorney will reach out to everyone that has a liquor license and talk to you directly. Okay, but he never pick up. He never answer. He will. He's still doing investigations. You know, we left so many messages for him with his, you know, assistant. He never called back. So, uh, you know, I know. Just give me 30 seconds. So when can we have a meeting, Mayor, to go through this? I will reach out to him and I will let you know. Well, you see, this is the same thing that happened last meeting. I know, just give me 30 seconds, please. I know, just 30 seconds more. <laughs> so last meeting, Mayor, you said by Friday, the administrator, Freeman, he said, Friday, we're going to have everything done. Okay, Friday came, nothing happened. I come to this village, well, Mr. Moore, he see me every single day. How many times you see me a day? Maybe two, three times. Every single day I'm here. He said, in process. That's the only answer we hear from you, process. So nobody's giving us a definite answer. You have one. All right, thank you. Thank you. Sure, go ahead. How you guys doing this afternoon, this evening? I'm Commander Riley. I'm the commander of the Outreach Response Unit. And first, let me say this. I was really um, disturbed that what took place with the citizen, Ms. White. Going forward, if any of you guys are experiencing any type of um, difficulty or traumatic experience when it comes to trying to get someone to respond to whether it's an eviction, whether it's um, um, squatters, please reach out to me because I can assure you this is the first that I heard of this and it really disturbed me. I don't think no citizen or the residents of Dalton has to really be subjected to any disrespect, especially from the police department. My name is Commander Riley. I can be reached at area code. If you got a pencil, please take down this number and I'm gonna give you my email address because I'm the type of person I like to see results and I can assure you, if I tell you that I'm gonna um, investigate, it will be investigated and it's gonna be done swiftly. Right now, we're in the process of revamping um, the whole police department. Um, we just newly appointed a deputy chief, which is Deputy Chief Lacey. The chief has always did an exceptional job and I really take pride in his command staff and I especially take pride in the things that I do. So please take down this number and I can assure you that I will investigate this for Ms. White and things are gonna be handled very swiftly. The number is area code 1708-201-3200. Um, I'm gonna give you my personal phone number and I do this all the time because that's just the type of person I am. My phone number is area code 773-680-1559. The email address is iriley at vodalton.org. Now, I've been with this administration for two years, and I can assure you that anything that I've ever tried to get or support I needed to get, the mayor has been very supportive. I came in two years ago. I'm not, I don't have a dog in this race, but I do see the difference in you all's township. You know, um, I just had a citizen who came up today, and she was saying about kids um, bouncing the basketball. And I said to her, wouldn't you rather have a basketball in your community because that's what kids do. They need places to go and play. Everybody else has a nice park where they can go play basketball. I live in the city of Chicago. And when I tell you that the crime is rampant, Dalton is really, really doing well compared to what I see every day. Every day there's killings. 
it's, it's off the chart. So the things that you all see that she's trying to bring to your village, I would be honored to even have. This is not me blowing smoke up you all's behinds or blowing smoke up the mayor's behind. It's a fact. I see things that you all can't even imagine. I've experienced things that you all have even can only imagine to experience. I'm just simply saying that please give the police department a chance. I can assure you that we're going to try to rectify whatever, whatever it is that you all or any complaint that you all may have. We're going to try to fix it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good evening. Good evening. How you guys doing today? Good. Good. I come today with two uh, issues. Uh, I would like, I would like uh, some police attention show to the alleyway behind Angels because we've been broken into twice last week. And fly dumping. They done made that whole alley a whole cesspool. So we can get that kind of cleaned up and get the police attention through there while we close, you know, so we can uh, keep moving forward and we won't have to come back to a building that's empty. If you guys can do that, thank you. Thank you. All right, that concludes public comment. Uh, next on the agenda is general announcements. Do anyone have any announcements? Sure, go ahead. Thank you. This coming Saturday, which is August the 12th, Tea with the Trustees will be at the Lester Long Field House which is 721 Ingalls. It's at 9.30 a.m. And it is a platform that allow uh, residents to speak on different issues that are taking place in the village of Dalton. Again, this Saturday, August the 12th, 9.30 a.m., Lester Long Field House. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Yes, may I have some? Sure. Go ahead. Um, Good, good evening, everyone. Happy Monday. Um, I, I'd like to thank the Urban Mail Network, the Enrichment Zone. Uh, they are a free mentoring group that offers culinary music production, boxing, basketball, and gaming uh, from Tuesday on Tuesdays, from Tuesdays to Thursdays, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, they are located in our very own backyard right here at 14240 Dante Avenue. So for any of the residents who have children and they want to find placement for them or uh, somewhere cool to hang out this summer and safe, um, please look into the Urban Mail Network. Um, i also like to thank them because two Saturday days ago, I hosted our first Dalton flea market of the year. Um, I thank the residents for all of the donations. We were able to raise half of our goal so we could provide the five teens in our Dalton Youth Empowerment Program with gift cards um, because most of them are having trunk parties because they are going away to college. So the goal was for us to have a fundraising, so a fundraiser so that we can provide some youth, uh, the funds to the youth. Uh, we will have another one before the season is over. So please uh, look out at our communications. If you are on Facebook, go to the Don't Trust These page. Or if you have some items and some bags of clothes you want to donate, uh, please feel free to call, contact me at 708 uh, 968 4297. Again, I would like to thank all of the residents. I had residents going to other to their neighbors' homes and picking up clothes and dropping them off. So I thought that was super, super cool. Um, thanks again for all the donations and uh, for the community outreach. It was super cool. Um, pretty soon, and as someone stated, there will be um, our taxes. So it is appeal time for our taxes. Um, again, I will reach out to everyone. I'll have a, a tax seminar soon so that we can discuss taxes for any of the residents who would like to appeal their taxes. Um, you can contact me regarding that also, but I will have uh, information shortly. So if you all are following the Dalton Trustees page, um, look out for that communication. And that would be all for me, Mayor. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Yes, sure. um, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd like to say um, the season is, is withering down because um, Thorn Township uh, HAP Senior Lawn Program, uh, we're losing students because school is getting ready to start back and they actually cut grass for seniors over the age of 60. So our staffing is <clears throat> getting a little short. Uh, we have about 10, 15 students on their way to college as we speak right now. So they'll be leaving and them some of my best workers, most college students work the hardest. My high school students are getting ready. They'll be leaving uh, after next week. So our staff will be getting short. So if you know any individuals from the age of 16 and up that don't mind 
Congrats for seniors over the age of 60. Please contact myself, Stan Brown, at 708-596-6040, extension 4001-4007-4008. That's 708-596-6040. Extension 4001-4007-4008. Uh, we're definitely looking for some more individuals to help come out so we can finish uh, taking care of our seniors and keep these lawns manicured up for you. So it's plenty of employment all the way for the next three months for the summer. So if you know a neighbor next door that has some kids that's just bouncing a basketball, like to make a little money, tell them to come on up to the township and help cut some grass for our seniors. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? If I can be recognized. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Just want to give um, kudos to Dalton Park District and especially former uh, Park District Commissioner Kevin A. Bowens for the recent event they did, Christmas in July. A uh, great successful event. Uh, I wasn't able to attend in person on that day, but I did unload the truck that had piles and piles of toys. I understand every child went away with at least five gifts, and that's great to have Christmas twice in the year. So I know this, Chris, this, this December will be bigger and better, but I want to give kudos to them for that, act, for that activity or event. Um, in addition to that, I want to thank the Dalton residents that um, reach out with calls or questions or concerns. I hope the information that we're able to share related to uh, whether it's the village budget, financials, uh, we find beneficial. Any questions, uh, please feel free to give me an email J, J House at VODalton.org, or I can be reached via uh, call or text 708 414 0719. Thank you. All right. Hey, anyone else? Hey, Mayor. Yes. Before we move on, I forgot uh, Dalton Bears football and cheer league uh, right here at Dalton Park, 721 Ingle Street in Dalton, Monday through Friday, 530 to 730 p.m. until August 18th. Uh, they have cheer league. It's $300. Football is $250. And it's from uh, ages fifth through eighth grade. Thank you. May I almost forget. All right. Does that conclude general announcements? All right, moving on. Next, we have Village Clerk's Report. Good evening. Um, I'm requesting the Board of Trustees approval of the minutes for the following uh, board meetings. March 6, 2023, regular board meeting, and July 17, 2023, special board meeting. All right. Is there a motion to approve March 6, 2023, regular board meeting for the minutes? Is I'll there make a motion? motion. Second. There's a motion and second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stan Brown. Present. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Motion passed. Thank you very much. Um, and I don't have any information for communications today. Thank okay. You. Next, um, is there a motion to approve July 17, 2023 special board meeting? Is there a motion? So moved. Is second. there a second? Is there a motion and second? Any discussion? Please call the roll. Trustee Norwood? Aye. Trustee Stan Brown? Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. Trustee Holmes? Aye. And Trustee Belcher? I'm sorry. She's absent. Motion passed. All right. Next on the agenda, uh, engineer's report. Ryan, you have the floor. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Madam Clerk. Trustees, department heads, and residents from the village of Dalton. Just a couple of items in my report this evening. Uh, the village-wide street resurfacing project will start on August 14th. I have a meeting scheduled this week with uh, Superintendent Stacy, so we can go over the um, different segments of roadway that we will be resurfacing this year. Um, it'll be a mill and overlay. It'll be minor curb and sidewalk repairs on uh, individual streets throughout the village. Um, second item I have, um, the, there will be a sewer project. The project will be conducted by the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, and that will be for about a million dollars. Um, at the next board meeting before you will be an intergovernmental agreement 
for you to pass um, and send that back to the MWRD for their approval. MWRD will design the project, bid the project out, and then uh, monitor the construction of the project. And that will happen on the west side of the village. Um, as part of that IGA, it will have the uh, exact locations that the that MWRD will be uh, concentrating on. Um, the last item I have, um, the village um, will be receiving about $100,000 to do a water service inventory um, audit. Um, this is to know what type of service line, the material that all the residents have in the village of Dalton. Uh, and this was a grant that was applied for through the IEPA and will be received by the village. So I'll be working with the public works department uh, on a kickoff meeting for that project. Uh, that's all I have for my report this evening, and I will entertain any questions that the board may have. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Next on the agenda is department uh, reports. Uh, Police Chief Collins. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor, trustees, Madam Clerk, and residents. As far as the stats for the month of July, during that month, the police department responded to 1,971 calls for service, issued 757 parking citations, 125 traffic citations, and 6,547 red light violations. The department also made eight felonious arrests, 45 misdemeanor arrests, and served three warrants. I would like to report also that uh, our robberies, burglaries, and motor vehicle thefts have gone down. Uh, the village has been doing a great job getting those motor vehicle thefts down. Uh, we had been having an epidemic of thefts, those motor vehicle thefts, but uh, everybody seems to be doing a great job at securing their vehicles. I'd also like to report that also on um, September 29th, there will be our car show finale. That'll be the last one for the year. I encourage everyone to come out and see all the antique vehicles and the, uh, and the fast cars and the Corvettes and all the bikes and things. But also with that, we will be including uh, live music. That'll be our blues jam night. So we're calling all musicians out to come on out and have some fun. So everybody come in and enjoy some live music and those fancy cars. Also in the future, the PD will be conducting, conducting another entry level exam. So those who uh, aspire to be a first responder in the, in the police service, please come out. When we announce that and uh, take the exam, we give preference points to residents, veterans, and college grads. And also, um, as further efforts to reduce the burden on the taxpayer, uh, we are utilizing our COPS hiring grant that we were awarded. A $1.1 million, so that uh, covers uh, a pretty healthy cost that, uh, that, uh, that the officers for their salary and also their benefits package. Um, so it's a good thing. We will always continue to apply for grants and hopefully receive those grants so that we can use that grant money. In addition to the grant money, uh, we also rely on what's called asset forfeiture funds. Asset forfeiture funds are when, a, uh, say, a drug dealer or someone who's involved in criminal activity is arrested. The proceeds um, that they have, such as the drug money or the vehicles that they use to commit these crimes, we seize those, we seize those uh, pieces of property and also those funds. It goes to court, and once it goes to court, if the judge determines that um, those funds should be kept, we keep a portion of those proceeds and we use those proceeds when we need uh, pieces of equipment or training or anything like that. So that further reduces the burden on a taxpayer using asset forfeiture funds. I'd like to also remind everyone that village stickers should be on your vehicles by this time. Uh, police officers are looking for village stickers to be on your vehicles. If you do not have one displayed, it is very likely that you will receive a uh, parking citation for that. And that concludes my report. All right, thank you. Um, next, we have Fire Chief McKay. Thank you, Mayor Henyard, Madam Clerk, Board of Trustees, Department Heads, and most importantly, the residents of Dalton. Uh, the statistics for the Fire Department year to date, uh, emergency response is 3,198, of which 
uh, fire responses, hazardous materials, and motor vehicle accidents. We have 1,049 responses and emergency medical services, 2,149 for the total of 3,198, which again is around 15 calls of service per, per shift. Again, we talked about this before, but CPR saves lives. Um, there were four EMS calls within the past couple months where the crews from the Dalton Fire Department and the Bud's Ambulance Crew performed CPR and other advanced life-saving skills on uh, June 21st, May 15th, May 19th, and May 24th. Because of the efforts of the fire department, which we have EMTs and paramedics with Bud Bud's Ambulance, four people are alive today. So our next board meeting, we'll recognize the members who received awards from Bud's Ambulance and Ingalls Hospital. So it shows that the training pays off, and we have the, 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 the uh, proof in the pudding today as we have folks that are still alive today because of the services rendered. Uh, lastly, uh, please drive cautiously, especially during inclement weather, uh, along, especially along Sibley Boulevard uh, between Indiana Avenue and Wallace Avenue. The fire department has responded to multiple accidents on that stretch of roadway, including in the past week uh, two motor vehicle accidents where we had to perform extrication and utilize the jaws of life. Unfortunately, during one of those incidents, there was one fatal. However, again, with the life-saving medical skills that we have, uh, we're able to, one person still alive because of that. So please be careful, drive cautiously, and that would complete my report, Mayor. Thank you. Next, we have Stacey Corral for Public Works. Thank you, Mayor Henry. Good evening, residents of Dalton. Super, um, <laughs> super Mayor, uh, I always give her a kudos. Uh, we had an event that happened. Uh, let me see what day that was. We had a storm on July 29th, uh, approximately 12.30 a.m. The village of Dalton experienced a severe storm causing significant damage to our water storage reservoir. Uh, due to the fast response of the men and women of Public Works Department and our leader, Mayor Henyard, uh, no residents' water pressure was lost, nor was our system contaminated with uh, any contaminants during the storm and we are now currently working on a comprehensive plan to rebuild and update our entire water system so i just want to give everyone an update uh, if anyone was aware of that or wondering what happened with that uh, please give the men and women of the public works department and our mayor uh, a round of applause for handling that issue uh, i'm going to now go into my report productivity report for July of 2023, the Public Works Department has completed four B-Box repairs, one emergency shutoff, three water main breaks, 10 sewers cleaned, two sewers repaired, two street lights repaired, four new light poles installed, uh, locations 145 in Shepherd, 147 in Shepherd, 154 in Dobson, and 154 in Minerva. 55 trees cut down, 141 trees trimmed, seven street signs repaired, eight vacant lots cut, and 387 vacant houses cut. Uh, I have a list of blocks that are also being trimmed. Uh, we're trimming trees at 151st in Irving, 142nd in Cottage Grove, 143 to 144 in Oak, 146 to 147 in Edbrook, 143 in Grant, 146 in Kenwood, 145 to 147 in Dobson, I'm sorry, 145 to 157 in Dobson, 154 to 157 in Minerva, 154 to 157 in University, 154 to 157 Drexel, 146 to 149 Michigan, 142 in Manor, 158th blocks of Cornell. Uh, that's just some that you all can ride by and take a look at how the trees are being trimmed and how the dead and dilapidated trees are being removed to open up uh, the streets for light, street lights and other safety reasons. We have a lot of trees that are dying and falling and causing a lot of damage, including tearing up our sidewalks and sewers. Um, the Public Works Department is working every day to ensure this community is kept up uh, in a timely fashion. We go through a lot of emergencies here, like any other suburb in the Southland, but the men and women of the Public Works Department under the leadership of Mayor Tiffany Henyard are doing the work of the people. We're gonna continue to do the work of the people despite what naysayers may say. We are here, we're doing work that has not been done in this community in over 25 years, maybe more, for some of you residents who have been here longer than us. Uh, this work is well overdue and well needed and this administration is making sure we take all of the steps possible to clean this neighborhood up and put it back how it originally was and increase the quality of life of the residents here in the village of Dalton. So uh, 
when certain people say certain things about the Public Works Department, of course, it's gonna uh, <laughs> it's gonna touch me a little bit. But uh, for the most part, the residents here do understand that their Public Works is working for them. They do understand that the Mayor's Office is working for them. And I just want to give you all a little insight of what we have been doing. And again, drive around the community, and you can see how it's much cleaner. The grass is cut. We have a beautiful park for our children to play at. Uh, our water main breaks are being repaired faster. Uh, anything that comes across our table or our desk is being handled in a timely fashion, and we're going to continue to handle it in a timely fashion. Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you, thank you. Y'all give it up for Stacey Corral, man. You awesome. All right, all right. Appreciate you. And I, too, want to add to giving you your flowers while you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, we love you. And ain't nothing you're going to do about it. But we thank you for just always being on top of the needs of the people in the community. Because one thing I do want to say, even though this is not my report, but I'm going to just be brief. Because he wakes up early every morning, drives through the community, him and I. And that's why I'm speaking to it. And we talk about what street lights are out while you guys are asleep. We talk about um, where we need to actually put new tree lights. Um, lights before we cut the trees. I'll say that. We've been going on the east side of town. We trim everything on the east side. Now we're on the west side of town and we basically making a path so you guys can see and go to your vehicle safely day in, day night. Um, one thing I love about them is when y'all complain about the vacants, public works are the ones that goes out and cut the vacants that you live next door to. Um, they also repair the street signs and they also put up stop signs. I know you guys are aware of the stop sign that is on on Greenwood so please stop speeding slow down and proceed with caution because half of the time people are going too fast by the time you notice a kid or ball or something in the street is too late you didn't hit that car you didn't hit that person so our goal is to make sure we put safety first a lot of times people be upset about it but it's worth it because we save lives like for instance the one-way sign that's on Wentworth on the west side of town do you guys know how many accidents happen every day right there by us putting a one-way sign up we are causing people to go to the light where you should go because half of the time people try to make that left and they underestimate how fast that car is coming and normally they get hit and some of the time uh, people do not make it so I thank you Stacy. I thank you Public Works I thank you for all you do because without you um, this committee would not be getting back on track people can say whatever they want to say but I'm telling you from my mouth to your ears, you guys are doing an awesome job. I appreciate y'all. Keep doing what y'all doing. Residents, y'all give it up for them because they yeah. there first when the storms happen. They the one to show up and show out for you. And then the rest of us come. <laughs> so thank you so much. We appreciate you. Um, next, we have water. Um, Juanita. Good evening, Mayor and your board and residents. First of all, I want to apologize to the young lady. I will be speaking about that tomorrow in my meeting in the morning. Then I will talk to you after the board meeting. So I just want to apologize to you once again. Also, it's been over two years without water shut off in the village of Dalton. On August 1st, the water department, along with the public works department, has been sitting out shut off notices. You can come into the water department and make a payment arrangement for your water bill and discuss with me if you, you know the problems, like you just said. Also, the water department hours are operations Monday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and the telephone number is 708 201 2999. Also, a friendly reminder, like the chief said, the vehicle stickers has doubled effective August 1st. Thank you, Mayor. Once again, I want to thank the mayor because she's on it all the time. Thank you, Mayor, once again thank for you. everything that you do. Thank you. And I just want to reiterate what she just stated about the water. We have been not turning off water for two years, guys. It is time for you guys to come to the village and pay, pay what the village is owed, which is pay for your water. Because right now we're still paying the city of Chicago, despite you guys not paying the village. So I just want you to be aware of that. Um, please do not be mean and rude to um, public works when they come by to cut it off. Just get it right and just come up here and get on a payment arrangement because we still offer those services to you. We are not just trying to cut your water off just to be cutting it off. I do believe in making it right as it relates to if you want to make it right, come to see Miss Juanita over at the water department, get on a payment arrangement and you your water will not be disrupted um, because I do believe that you need to be able to flush your toilets, wash your hands, especially after COVID. I just need you guys to be willing to um, make that, that leap because some people are upset 
because we allow you guys to go without paying water um, and they've been paying their water bill all this time. So when you see estimates, some of you have estimates or some of you have actuals and you just not have paid the village of Dalton for all those years. And now it's just time for you guys to pay. Another way that you can actually help with your bill, which uh, the water department allows you to do is you can get help from other organizations which put down a down payment where they'll pay half, half the time and they will make sure that you can be um, whole. So again, utilize those services is the resources are here to help not hinder you it's here to help but right now guys we have to get back on one accord we want to be just like Orland and Tinley and Bolingbrook but um them guys do pay their water bills so I just want to make that clear um thank you Miss Juanita for all you do over there uh next we have housing uh building and permits uh William Moore thank you Mayor good afternoon good afternoon uh, trustees board tremendous board and to our precious residents, Mayor, I'll be giving you a combined um, departments as well as code and, uh, enforcement. Um, Ms. Kim Austin asked me to give her a report as well, so I'll be giving that report as well if that's okay. Uh, the combined revenue generated for both departments, which is housing and permits for the month of July was $112,469.48. For the housing department, uh, we had a, a grand total of $70,440. I'll give a high level of the uh, amount of uh, revenue that we generated. Uh, we had 35 as is sale inspections at $8,490, uh, 53 escrow checks deposited at $46,000, uh, 57 housing tickets at $13,450. And for permits, uh, we had a grand total of $42,029.48. We had 40 building permits at $20,372.99, 17 homeowners permits at $1,800. Uh, 44 plumbing permits at $11,074.48, and 24 contractor license registrations at $8,050. And I'll be giving the report for code enforcement. Um, she had gave me a total of 505 tickets written for the month of July, it was a grand total of $134,075. Merit this time that completes my report as well as for code enforcement. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, next on the agenda is corporate bills. Uh, Trustee Stan Brown, corporate bills. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. Again, ladies and gentlemen, electronic warrant list for the corporate bills for June the 30th, 2023. Corporate payments, $422,547.60. Water fund, $364,640.31. Forfeit you Federal forfeiture funds, $11. Seward fund, $1,235.31. American Rescue Plan, $1,027.20. 2009A bond, $90,000. 2009B bond, $143,655.00. 209C bond, $57,700. Melanie Fitness Center, $227.80. Homewood Disposal Bonds, $1,337,250 for total corporate payments of $2,418,294.22. Is there a motion? A motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been a motion and a second to pay the bill as read. Um, any discussion? Please call the roll. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stan Brown. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Motion passed. All yes, right. Mayor, I'd like to continue. Yes, please. The AP Warren list for August the 7th, 2023. Corporate payments, $1,594,533.02. Let me reread that. $1,594,533.02. Gross payroll, July the 14th, 2023. $476,398.15. Gross payroll, for July the 28th, 
$98.62. Melanie Fitness Center, $1,623.75 for a total corporate payments of $2,545,653.75. Is there a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been motion and second to pay the bills as read. Um, any discussion? Mayor, if I can be recognized. Sure, go ahead. Okay, I have a couple of questions on this warrant list. One being, just want to make sure that um, if this list is approved, that we do have sufficient funds to issue the checks uh, this week. And the second question is, I want to make sure that if approved, the paying these bills would not lead the city where into where we need to take out a bond in the future or any tax increases. So. I want to see if those questions can be answered. So we do have the money to pay the bills, as we did with the last warrant. And as it relates to a bond, we will need a bond to fix the infrastructure that blew up anyway for $5 million. Got nothing to do with these bills. So when we do bring up a bond in the future, it got nothing to do with this. We need to basically fix our infrastructure, which I'm going to basically announce in my mayor's report. But that answers your question. Okay. So then my comment to that is, I think that we want to make sure that we're living within our means and the infrastructure. There have been things in the budgets in the print in the past, and I think we can put it in the budget without taking out a bond or putting more debt on the village or the residents. So I'm not in favor of any bond payment. <clears throat> Additionally, the last meet last meeting, I was advised that we did not have the money to make all the payments. So I want to make sure that we do, which is the reason for this question. Thank you. Okay. Well, you was advised wrong. Uh, you did not sign to pay people is what the issue is currently now, sir. So if you're going to tell it, tell it right. You were supposed to sign the checks that Trustee Brown agreed to pay, and you did not pay them. So you are the reason for the holdup. She agreed to pay everything we put on the warrant list, and you, Trustee House, stopped in along with the clerk and did not sign to pay certain vendors. And that goes... To my next comment, you guys pick and choose who you want to pay. You pick and choose who y'all want to play with as it relates to pilot tricks. And it's not up to you. We did that thing right. We put it up for this board to vote on. The board voted on it. And your job is to sign the check. Now, another vendor, y'all call and ask them about payment. You can't dictate how we dish out the funds here at the village. You do not work here. You do not run the day-to-day -day operations. If they say this is how we pay our vendors, this is how we pay our vendors. So my advice to you, sir, is to make sure you sign and pay the people that you guys did approve. So moving on. Rebuttal. Moving on. What was that? I have one, one more comment. Go ahead. The board's vote was to pay each vendor on there in full, one check, one payment. The board was not presented with any payment plans. The board was advised we have the money, just as we are today. And when we went to sign the checks, the checks were broken down into a, what amounted to a payment plan. So again, if the board was presented or told we do not have the money to pay this in one check, the board potentially or likely would have voted differently. So the um, concern is, and I will say this um, as I've indicated in the email, if those vendors are presented to the board or to myself in one check, I will gladly sign that one check and that vendor can be paid in full as the board voted. If a payment plan is needed, I would ask that that be presented to the board because the board is entitled to know that we do not have funds to pay that. Again, for the record, and I just told you, trustee house, you don't know what you're talking about. That's why you do not run the day-to-day -day operation. Your job is to legislate, not govern the village. That's my job, sir. If my finance department is telling me we have the funds, we have the funds. Your job is not to supersede any type of process that we have in place. And for the record, when the board votes to pay anybody, it don't say nothing about one check. And this is how I know you guys don't pay attention to anything because you've been signing checks all this time, correct? So if you've been signing checks all this time, you've been signing checks where people get paid in portion. For instance, if we say we're going to redo City Hall, use that as an example, we have put the whole amount on the warrant list. So you guys know this is the total amount that we're looking to pay this vendor. Then they will break it down and give them a deposit to come and start the work. And then when they're done with the work, they will give them the difference. That's how we do it up here. 
but you seems to think you know everything, but you don't. So your job is to sign the check, sir, which equals the amount that you guys approve. Our job is to make sure that we give it to the vendor. So when they call us to get paid, we don't have a check because he didn't sign the check to pay the vendor. It's just so we all clear on what's going on in um, the village of Dawn, because people like to tell a lot of lies and they don't even be the truth. So again, my advice is for you to sign the checks as we agreed at the last meeting so all these vendors can get paid um, in a timely manner, which they all agree to do. So you spoke to that vendor as well, especially the one that you owe a million dollars to. So I don't understand why you're holding up that person check like you always do. So I just wish we stopped playing politics and you just signed a check because you I know you're upset that you lost the vote and she voted with us and everybody got paid. But now it's just time to um, pay that vendor. So I appreciate that. So what's on the floor is to pay the bills as read. Um, it's a motion in a second. Please call her up. What, Mayor, um, I have a comment. Yep. Prior to me voting, what was that? I have a comment. Prior to me voting, go ahead. Um, I, I, I think you you answered the question. So you stated that for the record we have the money. Um, that was my thing. I wanted to make sure we had clarity because I do I do remember us receiving an email stating that we don't have the money to pay some some vendors um, last week. So just prior to my vote, you you stated that we do have the money. The funds are available. Correct. You just said I answered that question, right. so you know the answer. Right. So you're saying that the funds are available. You can continue, trustee. Oh. Okay. I just want to make sure prior to my vote, you're saying that the funds are available. We received the email last week stating we did it. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's what I wanted to do for clarity prior to my vote. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying we do have the money. We have the funds. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted you to clarify that prior to my vote. I, I just said it eight times, I, I but wanna, I guess I got to say it again. Third time is a charm. You know that. Third time is a charm. I don't understand Thank what's you. going on, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. And you guys all have the bank account. So that's what's so crazy about this. Trustee House gets the bank account every day of our ending balance of what we have in the bank account. So I don't understand what the problem is, but they sit here and tell the people a whole different story to store up turmoil, which everybody see what we got in the bank account. But that's either here or there. Um, it's motion to second. Please One last the road. thing. I, I know oh, what yeah. they're saying. And I did vote to pay the bills. That's correct. I did. The reason why I did that is because you had that one certain vendor that threatened to sue if not paid. So my thing is vote, pay them all, pay everybody. So when you say it, pay them in multiple payments, pay them all, be done with it. When the person threatens to sue you, you you're looking at obligations for the attorney to pay. You know, you got to pay attorney bill, pay them all. So when we're going back and forth saying you got it, you don't, you got it. Write one check and be done with this guy. And let's move on with a clean, with a clean slate. Thank you. All right, call her up, please. Aye. Trustee Stan Brown. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Motion passed. All right, next on the agenda is... Old business, um, there's no old business, so we're going to go to 12 new business. Is there a motion for approval of ordinance number 23-, amending the Village of Dalton Code of Ordinances related to disabled parking fines? So the reason why we put this on here is because we get a lot of complaints as it relates to people parking and the handicap. Um, right now, we would like to have the fine increase to $350. So that's why that is on here. So we're just asking to amend what is already written and to basically be able to collect more um, than what we already collect. So an attorney also stated that it goes up to 650 if someone fraudulently uses a, a handicap placard and it don't belong to your car, then you will be ticketed for that amount because people are doing <laughs> all kinds of things. So I just want to make that clear. Um, is there a motion? A motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please call her up. One thing, no. right quick. Oh, sorry. What is the current? If you want to go to the Yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Tiff. Uh, 
Okay. the uh, the current uh, the current the current ordinance is actually two hundred and fifty dollars, and that tracks with state law. <clears throat> However, state law does allow a local municipality, home rule or non home rule, to actually adopt an ordinance to increase the fine to up to three hundred and fifty dollars. So that's why the fine has been increased to three hundred and fifty dollars. And I apologize, Mayor, it's actually six hundred for the fraudulent use. Um, but hopefully, this will curb fraudulent use of handicap placards, as you know, sometimes when people, you know, will have their mother or their father's car or something and run into Walgreens and park in the handicap spot and take it away from somebody who actually needs it. So hopefully this will help curb that and encourage um, compliance with the handicap disabled parking laws. All right. Um, Caller, please. Trustee Norwood. No. Trustee Stan Brown. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. No. Trustee House? No. Trustee Holmes? Aye. Motion failed. All right. Next on the agenda is, no, can I have a motion to approve ordinance number 23-, revising certain fees and establishing a fee schedule for Pacific housing matters, building permits, inspections, and related matters. All right. So the reason why this is on the agenda is because we have a lot of issues in housing as it relates to uh, fines and fees. For instance, if someone is renting their property out or selling their home, they will call us. They'll set up a rental inspection or a sale inspection. Therefore, um, they're scheduled today, say one o'clock. We get there at one o'clock. Um, the person don't show. It's one thirty. They still don't show. Um, by two o'clock. They, they leave. I'm not saying they stay a whole hour. I'm just using an example. Um, they leave. Uh, once they leave, they then call and reschedule. The problem we have is we don't have a reschedule fee. So that means that we wasted our employees' time for that day, and now we're going to go again, and we don't make the money um, for the village to reschedule like most communities does. Um, that is the reason for that being on here. Also, physical printouts. Sometimes people come in here and they ask us to print out um, their reports. Now, we do not charge for that. That means paper. That means money. That means time and employees. So we want to charge uh, $5 a page for physical printouts for inspection reports. We are just like Section 8. Section 8 um, allows you to go online and see your inspection report. Um, we do the same thing here. But when you guys want us to print it out, that's like having a um, Kinko's or something. Like, you can go there and print your, your stuff out. They charge, so should we. So that's where we are with that. Um, one other thing. Crime fee um, inspection addendum. Um, $100 for an inspection. So we're trying to do different fees as it relates to the housing department. Any discussion? Is there a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Second. All right, call the roll. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stan Brown. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Yes. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Motion passed. All right, thank you. Uh, next, is there a motion for approval of ordinance number 23 many the Village of Dalton Code of Ordinances Related to Stop Sign uh, Violation Fines? The reason why this is on the agenda is every resident knowing here, everybody runs those stop signs. So my job is to make sure I create a safety zone for everybody that lives in Dalton. Um, currently now, we charge $100 for running a stop sign. So we are considering the $300 mark to a person that runs a stop sign in the village of Dalton. Because all of you guys ask us to put down speed bumps, which then we will become a roller coaster in Dalton. So right now, speed bumps are really in areas such as school zones, and some blocks have them or already had them before me. So we're asking the board to um, increase the fine, and hopefully you guys will stop speeding because hopefully it's not my residence. It's outside people speeding through the stop signs. That's the whole point. So is there a motion? A motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there a motion to second? Any discussion? Yeah, might be recognized, Mayor. Sure, go ahead. Hopefully that they can um, uh, support and pass this because we have a lot of seniors that are trying to get across the streets and uh, a lot of children that are playing outside. So, you know, even though um, we're increasing this fine, they know right from wrong how fast to go. But if they push that button to try to speed and try to get away and we have to send a clear message to them you know you can't run these stop signs in in Dalton and we got to protect these seniors so we have to send a message one way or another whether you live in the village of Dalton or not 
but uh, increasing these fines and message to get around. But as I stated, even though we're increasing it, they've been educated to slow down and stop. Thank you. Okay. Okay, if I can oh. be recognized. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, on this one, I'm not in favor of that. I think the $300 is excessive. I think $100 um, uh, sends the message. Uh, I think $300 is almost a car note. So uh, I, don't, I um, of course, understand that there's a need for compliance, uh, but I don't want to do it. And at a certain point, we start at a certain point, it gets excessive and unaffordable. So I'm not in favor of this one. So um, for the record, I think you guys should do it because you got to make them stop somehow, some way. Right now, it's already at $100. And if you go up and down Dalton, you will see people right before your own eyes running stop signs. Um, police are doing an awesome job of stopping them, ticketing them. But some people are repeat fenders. So obviously, it's not doing enough. So if you start hurting people's pockets as it relates to increasing the fees, people tend to stop or get the message. So all I can do is put it before the board. And it's up to you guys to say yes or no. Um, I did my part. So... Please call her up. Yeah, may I be recognized? Go Hi, ahead. Yeah. Um, in, in regards to this one, so overall, and and this applies to the, the last one also. Um, my my concerns in general is that yes, we do want to uh, make it so that people are following the rules, but I've been receiving a lot of calls and texts from residents, and their concern is that. They want to be ensured that we're not um, frivolously spending as a village and then putting the cost of everything on the taxpayers' back. Um, so I just wanted that to be for the record. Uh, that is a concern with residents. I've, I've heard you via call. I've heard you via text. I've heard you via email. And even in regard to the, the last thing that I just voted for, um, I'm just hoping that we things are clear in regards to the fines and fees just so we know because i know once before um when the fees are changed i'm i'm not notified a uh, recommends typically tell me so we vote here and then we never see the fees or fines and then sometimes residents are like hey did you all know that this is double did you all know that this is triple so just for the record uh, prior to my vote i just want to make it known to the residents that i do hear you all in regarding to the fees and fines, and I don't want you all to feel as if we're putting in on on you all as resident. Uh, thank you. And okay, uh, one one second, trustee. Uh, we are not doing that to the residents. Like I said, hopefully we're catching the people that's coming through our town, and then it's not our resident. Hopefully, our job is to clean up our town. We either gonna clean it up, or we are gonna sit here and do nothing. So what I'm saying to you is the problem is becoming worse. So we have to do something to make it better. As legislators, your job is to find ways to fix what is broken. Your job is to implement something that's going to change people's way of moving through our community. Think about it. When you go through South Holland, what do you see? Brake lights, right? But when you get down to Dalton, it's, it's Tucky 500, I'm telling you. So all I'm saying is where's the fear tactic as it relates to going through our community compared to going through anyone else's community? They, they don't fear because we don't do nothing is what I'm always told. So now if you start putting fines in places and things that make them say, hey, don't go in Dalton because Dalton not going to play. We want our town to be safe. We want our kids, our, our parents, our loved ones to be safe, just like anyone else. And right now, people are running those stop signs left and right. You wouldn't believe how many people ask me for speed bumps because they speeding on the blocks. So now we do something. All we can do is try. And if it does not work, then you try something else. But we have to get it right. Go ahead, Trustee um, Stan Brown. Yeah, I'm, I'm in most agreeing with that because safety is first in all aspects. Um, Try going by uh, 8 o'clock in the morning to 148th and Dorchester. There's about <clears throat> six kids catch the bus there. Mm -hmm. I actually experienced the individual, the yellow bus stop with the stop sign out. Mm -hmm. He went past the bus and shot straight through the stop sign. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One time is bad enough. And if you go over here on 148th in Dearborn, the same thing. I saw that with the school bus stops there. I've seen the individual go past the bus, the bus with the stop sign out. And go straight through the stop sign. Is is no dollar amount on a life. Sure. Not mm -hmm. a a dollar amount. Three hundred dollars will get your attention. 
because I know myself, I ride dog and I've been riding for 33 years. I'm going to stop a little bit longer at a stop sign. Give it that two second warning. Stop one, two, then go. Because it's just that important. Uh, there's no price going to ever stop a individual that's going to still keep riding through a stop sign. They go through it, they need to pay. But it's going to definitely get their attention. So I just ask that the board don't let this one slip past because it's dangerous out here. And we run a lot of stop signs out here in Dalton. Go down 144th Street, go from Woodline going east all the way over to Blackstone. No stop sign, but the stop signs going north and south and going east and west. There's no stop sign. And people running these stop signs coming up Dalton, Dante, left and right. They're running lights very strong. So let's pull together on this one. Because if the if the bill is at three hundred dollars, leave it to the prosecutor. He may take it down to two fifty, maybe two hundred. But when you have a police officer asked to vote on this here, I can't say no to a police officer. When they say help us, help us to be safe out here. So if anything, this here will help bring more safety to our village. But just think about not just the seniors, you know, people in my age too. I can't get across the street as fast as I used to. And these youngsters, they like playing at the bus stops. So please, please, please pay a little more attention to see it because we do need help with these stops. Thank you. Can I speak, please? Sure. Okay. Even though you're putting these things in place, it still goes back to collection. We can put them all in place to increase the fine. But when it comes to collecting the money, we do not do a good job on collecting the money. You have fees in place now. We are million dollars behind in collecting fines, not only for parking and light, but in water also. So again, you put it in place, but are we getting the money? We're not getting the money. We're not getting the money. And another thing, if this is a moving traffic violation and a ticket is given, don't they go to Markham Courthouse and isn't that fine determined through Markham Courthouse? Is it not determined? Is it determined here or through the Markham Courthouse? That oh. fine. Is it determined there? So this is an ordinance which is home rule. So it's determined here because they will go to our court. Any ordinances um, that we write that's within our preview, they go to our housing court. So all moving traffic violations, you go here for court? For stop signs. Okay. Stop signs is dealt via ordinance. Okay. Well, I still say with the collection part, we're not doing a good job as collection. We can put increase all these other fines, but it's all about collecting the money. At the end of the day, you can raise it up to 500. Are we getting that money? Yeah. Not doing a good job. So, they have a company and key what is it called? Municipal, uh, MCLA, municipal use the mic, and we use that now to collect whatever's owed to the village. Um, once income tax time come, they go and they take part of the money. But, Keith yeah. can explain that. So, uh, municipal collections, um, of America, they uh, they collect our outstanding um, uh, fees that we have from residents or anybody else who owes us fines and fees. And then what they do is, is they try to collect them uh, via income tax uh, through the state um, at the beginning of year during tax time. Um, it's successful or it's not successful. It just depends on whether or not you have, uh, whether or not you have uh, an income tax check coming back. I think the other thing is, is that we could be a more aggressive um, filing liens. But again, you know, the lien process is um, takes a, a long period of time and you have to have more than one uh, collection. So uh, but there are there are certain steps we could take in terms of collections, but we're doing an amazing job just going about the process. But we'll have a conversation with our financial team and address uh, those issues. But right now we're doing a, a really good job right now with the infrastructure that we have in place. But we can do more. All right. Um, Can I be recognized, Mayor? Oh, go ahead. You know, let me, let me say this, make it very clear. We're in about 300 and something dollars. Most of our families can't get up 10000 or $15,000 to pay for a funeral. Mm. Many people who came in here, many residents that came in here, complained that we're not tough, we don't do nothing with yeah. them running these red red lights and stop signs like they on the damn highway. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're going to get tough, we're going to get tough. I'd rather them stop a vehicle than lose a life. 
stop a vehicle and may get weapons and drugs out of that vehicle. And nine times out of 10, when they're running them stop signs or them, or them lights, they're trying to get to the expressway anyway to get up out of Dalton. But if we're going to stand up, let's stand up and put a stop to it. The residents done asked over and over again, I don't see them stopping here. I don't see them stopping there. Now, we want to get this ordinance and we want to get the traffic patrol out there like they've been doing so we can just send a message and save some life. I mean, the dollar sign, it may be there, but you think about dollar sign, $15,000, $10,000 that you got to get up because somebody done did a hit and run on that stop sign and then they done took off. I'd rather have them stop the car, give them the ticket, and possibly impound the vehicle. It's about saving a life, not spending money, but so be it. If they got the wrong tag on there and they run that stop sign, then so be it. They got to suffer the consequences for what they did. It's as simple as that. If we're going to get tough, we got to quit talking about what's happening in Evergreen, what's happening in Cicero. No, it's about what's about to happen in Dalton. You got to stop. As simple as that. So I hope y'all support this. Right, if I can be recognized you. one more time. All right. This will be the last comment. We're going to call okay. um, I'm going to say other communities uh, successfully find ways to manage it, and they don't have a $300 price tag on it. Homewood, uh, Homewood comes to mind. South Island, if you go in there, they find ways to do it. So I, I'm certainly not saying that people should blow stop signs or that there's a price tag on the light. I am saying that individuals who get the, who are to get a fee, $300, I believe that's excessive. And at a certain point you start making the fees so high, people can't even afford it. So you're still not, you're still not accomplishing the goal. They're just going to get the fee and the, the ticket and toss it to the side. So I would say uh, under um, doing something else, I would try to look at some of the models that are being presented from Homewood or the Markham, other communities that are doing it successfully and they do not have a $300 price tag to it. Thank you. All right. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to end with it. We cannot sit here and say other communities are doing something, and they're doing it right. I'll give you an example. Public Works. In their contract, we got a second shift, and that's because it's a need for my community. So we do things that we need to do for the people. Everybody need and want will always be different. But right now, things are getting done in PW throughout the community because we have this second shift. Because when normal towns go home at 2 p.m., public works, the Marcus crew is still on the street until 7, 8 o'clock at night. That way we can play catch up with 20 years of neglect in our community. So with that being said, it's the same situation of what we saying we need in our community. Right now, we need laws that work in our community because right now nobody's obeying the law that already exists that's the purpose of home rule that's the purpose of legislators to create and make sure things work in your community when they do not y'all benefit is making laws so that means you can make a law that works for what Dalton needs right now because right now in Dalton everybody been re reckless for 20 30 plus years and y'all know that so I'm asking for you guys to help us, help the people. Because when they complain, I don't know if they, they must not be calling y'all with the complaints. Because when they call our office or call up here the Village Hall or call the police department, that's what they complain about. Or when they go into these sites of these accidents and people's loved ones that are sitting there, y'all don't go witness none of that. But I do. Both chief does. So we ask and let's fix it. And it comes from the simplest things that we are, are changing which is putting that one-way sign up, we stop a lot of accidents right there on Sibley because no one could come out and make a left. Now we're saying help with the stop signs because now if people stop, people will be so scared of getting that $300 ticket that they have stopped, they won't run it. But when are we going to stand up and say, hey, enough is enough, this is what we're going to do in Dalton because we want Dalton to be better. We don't want to see our loved one or someone else's loved one on the side because we, we didn't want to change because we want to stay with the normal Remember, ain't nothing normal about Tiffany Henry. Y'all know that. So we got to fix it to make it right. That's what I'm asking this board to support us on. And it's a shame we spent 30 minutes to try to convince everybody to, to fix safety. But, hey, I'll spend another hour on it if I have to. But I'm asking you guys to support it. Um, Clerk Key, please call around. Trustee Norwood. No. Trustee Stan Brown. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. No. Trustee House. No. Trustee Holmes. Aye. The motion fell. 
Okay, so there, there y'all have it. Um, so when y'all call and complain about them running them stop signs, I don't know what to tell you. Um, the fine is still at $100, just so people that's just tuning in understand what's going on. And um, thank your trustees. Uh, next, is there a motion for approval of ordinance number 23- amending section of chapter 28, title 3 of the village code regarding short-term rental fines? So this one is a uh, Airbnb. Airbnb. Yeah, so I'm gonna let the attorney talk to this. Um, I put this on there when I first became mayor, so that was over uh, two years ago. And the reason for this is because we do not, I repeat, whoever watching this, we do not allow Airbnbs in the village of Dalton. If you know someone that has it, or if you have it, I hope you stop, come today. So we do not allow you to rent to anybody. We get a lot of complaints as it relates to this. Um, it's a house um, on Shepherd that constantly, constantly rents two people through Airbnb and they have nothing but parties. Um, please fix it before we catch you uh, doing it. Right now we're asking for a stricter fines as we're asking for anything else um, because people are still doing it. But this time we're going to go out to the Airbnb. We want them to stop it because we're going to find them directly for allowing a resident or anybody to basically uh, post on their site to say it's for rent in the village because it can and will not be. We already have an ordinance that states this. We're just increasing the fine. Attorney? Uh, yes, what the mayor stated is exactly correct. The ordinance that is currently on the books already does allow for the finding of the Airbnbs. And it's not just Airbnb, it's Airbnb, Verbo. There's a whole bunch of different websites that do this, but it's the short-term rentals. And the short-term rentals have become a problem in a lot of communities. And my understanding that is it's become a big problem here in Dalton, especially with certain short-term rentals where they're having parties and you know sometimes those parties go bad. Um, so what this ordinance does is it increases the minimum fine from 1000 to 5000 And yes, that is a significant increase, but this is something that is prohibited within the village, and therefore it should not be being done at all. So that fine would not only go, you know, it could go, it go, could go on the homeowner or whoever is doing the rental, but as well as the company that's listing it on their website. So those companies need to pull that stuff down. And my understanding is the village will be monitoring that. Uh, it does allow for a, if there's a second offense within a 12 month period, the second offense goes up to $10,000 from $2,500. And again, yes, this is a significant fine, but the problems that these Airbnb, Verbos, these short-term rentals are causing not only in the community of Dalton, but honestly, nationwide, but very much so in the community of Dalton. This is an effort to curb that and to provide some, again, very significant fines so that the people that are renting out those houses don't do it anymore. And to also let the companies know that this will not be tolerated in the village of Dalton. Thank you. Is there a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please call her Um, May I have a discussion? Go ahead with you. Um, so, so I noticed that the increase is from $1,000 to $5,000, um, which I find a bit excessive. But I'm wondering, do we? Do you all have a game plan? I know no, no one stated. Is there a game plan in regards to do they receive a warning prior to their first? Because what if people don't know or are unaware? So, so currently right now, everyone do know. Uh, we mailed things out to uh, the companies and we told them about this. So everyone knows about the ordinance that's already on the books. But everyone keeps on allowing people to come and rent in our village and just throw a party for one day and tear the whole block up and then leave and then they do it again. And then the next weekend, then the next weekend, that residents on those particular blocks, even though I named one of them, um, we have to do something. We have to change it. So people do know. Okay. Mayor, can I be recognized? Sure. Okay, I see in the ordinance it mentions that the fine is $1,000 per day. Do we have any incidents where the people are fined on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? I think that could have sent a similar message without um, changing the fees up to $5,000. I'm not sure at the moment. Uh, that would be code enforcement and she's not current. She's not here. Okay, thank any you. more questions? Yeah, ma'am. So j just for the record, I, I, I am okay with us. Um, composing a plan with the code enforcement when she returns, or maybe we can all um, have a discussion with the code enforcement prior um, or, or at some point. But my concern is how 
on about it. I mean, for a person to get one one day every day for them to incur a fine, um, and the the fines being five thousand ten that thousand, um, that's a concern for me. So for me, um, I am okay with meeting with the code inspector. We can figure out um, some sort of plan where it's not going from a thousand to ten thousand um, directly, but a plan where we are adding additional fees at some point um, to kind of discourage this. So, okay, I'll try my best, give y'all the best examples and give y'all issues that the community has. That's one of them. People that don't mind paying things because they make a lot of money on one end, that's this type of situation. So if I say um, a person come in and they rent it for $1,000 for uh, Saturday and you charge them a $1,000 fee, now I got the rest of the week, I got 30 days, 30, 31 days in 28 in February, right, to rent out a property. And it's only at $1,000. It does not work because people are willing to pay the fee. Give you another example. This is me telling y'all the issues y'all got in y'all community, right, that y'all supposed to know. Police department just did a sting operation on several, several gas stations, bodegas, selling loose squares, selling liquor to minors, uh, cigarettes, everything, right? Tax invasion, everything. St sting operation. You know how many of them we done done? Chief, how many, about a roundabout. I know you don't know off the top of your head. How many sting operations we done done like that? I'm just giving you an example. It, it does not matter because they got the money. So we hit them. We give them a fine. And then it doubles, we give them another fine, and then guess what? They do it again and again because they make so much money that it doesn't hurt their pockets. That's why you see me increasing the fines because now we do the same thing with them, which I was going to put it on this agenda, but I want to see y'all temperature and see how y'all vote on this stuff first. If we do the same thing to them, they will stop because now you're charging them $10,000, $20,000. Nothing stopping them at $1,000. That's like chunk change to a, a business that's making more money on being illegal than being legal. So, Chief, um, if you don't mind, just tell them around about of how many. We do get. it several, uh, several times a year. And the reason we do that, because within a 12-month period, every, every violation increases the fine. Uh, and just an example, as the mayor was speaking about, uh, I was here, here in the Village Hall just last week, and one of the business owners happily came and paid the $2,500 ticket. And that just leaves room for them to make that money up for the rest of, until the next, th next thing. Some of it is based off of complaints uh, about tobacco being sold to minors and others are just, we just happen to do a sting that particular week and they get caught. Uh, so it's gonna continue. We, every sting that we've done over the last few years, there are multiple violations. So no one just completely stops. Thank you, thank you, Chief. And then also just to add to that, and I'm gonna let um, the village administrator speak to it as well, is that look at it as you're attaching it to the company, which is Airbnb. So normally companies will stop once you hit their pockets, almost like the railroad situation like we got on the agenda before you. Once I implemented that ordinance, when I say they start cutting uh, from 144 all the way down uh, Indiana to Sibley, they start cutting that lot. Before, they never would cut it. I don't care what, and it was on the $75 fine, y'all was um, giving the railroad. So when we increased it to $10,000, they start cutting the land. That's what um, that's the example, only thing that I could show you that really works, that we actually did, and it worked. So all I'm saying is if you do it for everything else, I believe it will work because it worked for that. And that's a billion dollar industry. So I just want to point that out, um, Keith. Um, so I, I think that we are, we're talking about um, these short term rentals. And I think we're forgetting the, the collateral damage. Um, it's not just that someone rented out a property, maybe destroyed a property or had some damage to someone else. There could be minors that are, uh, at these parties that they throw, they could be selling drugs. They could be, um, they could be prostitution. We don't know. There could be sex trafficking. There are a ton of things that are done at the with these Airbnbs and these verbos, and a bunch of other things that we don't ultimately want to have liability for long term. Um, this is a solution. This solution right here helps us get to the root of the problem, which is the listing, not the person, because if the listing, if you can't list it, then you don't have to find the person ultimately. 
So, you know, when you think about the listing for the Airbnb, we're not talking about the fine that get, gets passed down to the person. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get these agencies to understand that we mean business. And as such, we're, we will just continue to fine you excessively until you get the point. And again, um, we don't want to be on the news because somebody got caught up in some sex trafficking ring. We don't want some kid to OD in a house at a house party. We don't want somebody to tear up somebody's infrastructure or damage somebody else's property to light somebody's house on fire. We don't want any of our law enforcement or other our other services to have to be called out because we didn't do our due diligence. This is something simple. This is a simple solution to something that could possibly be a, a really, really bad problem long term for us. Um, and again, if we think that that's excessive, uh, if we think $5,000 is excessive, but $5,000 keeps up, uh, us out of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of lawsuits, possibly more, then I think we're not thinking about the long-term effects, especially, again, we're not talking about the individuals, we're talking about the lister. Um, and, and, and I think you all would agree to that, too. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Just point of clarity so currently are we finding the lister or are we finding the individual so currently now they're finding the lister the, list. the person that owns the property and now they're working on the airbnb uh, to stop it and it's entirely for posting it on their internet site or whatever that is so would those be two separate fines meaning the individual listing it gets a fine and airbnb because i'm okay with a fine to Airbnb. I still don't know if I would go at five thousand dollars in addition to it. But um, the way that I, my read of it was that this was an increase or a modification of the current one, which charges the lister. I, I didn't see anything in there that said Airbnb. Right. It's the company. That's the Airbnb. It's the company, and she says several other ones. I don't, I don't know all of them top of my head, but it's several other people that you can go to list your property, and then you can rent it out. Whether it's a day, two days, three days, and normally it's kids and it's a party so like i just stated the problem number one house you can go back was on shepherd that problem house have nothing but house parties every other day every other day so all i could do is just point out or show you guys what it is i'm speaking of so you can go check it out and see and knock on them doors and talk to them residents they can tell you the complaints and the issues and when they tear up the community when they leave because they got the alcohol bottles outside they got everything on the sun under the sun on that block that public works and different people go by and clean it up. So all I'm asking you guys is to put something in place to try to prevent it because right now it's kind of getting out of hand. So, so just want to point it out. Would the board be been amenable to 2,000 instead of still one to five? So we're trying something without going from one to five? Why you don't want to go high? It's either go high. Uh, well, that's my personal preference. But so I'm, you only want to go to 2,000? That's my it, preference. I don't speak for the entire board. You want to go 25? Can we do three? See, we found a See, now I'm down for a compromise. You want to negotiate? Man, we're going to go off there. It's a compromise thing. I know you're three. I know you're three, 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 sold. All right. Call a roll card. 3,000. Wait, we had 2,500 or 3,000. Can we go to three guys? Is, is that pushing these? Okay. Wait, okay. One thing, man, because yeah. I'm with the compromise. I like the way this is going. Yeah. But I, I am unclear. And I know that you stated right now yeah. we're finding the lister, right? Yeah. And someone is trying to figure out how to start finding the company. Correct. When I vote for this at this current moment, prior to them finding a way to charge the Airbnb, B &B, this yes or no will go towards the lister at the moment until you find a solution as to how to... Yeah. She said we can. We can do um, a Airbnb. You can <laughs> Yeah, so basically, I mean, the ordinance, you know, the, the current and the proposed amendment on the ordinance would allow both, it would allow the finding of essentially three people. Yeah, the, the the listing company, so, you know, the people that have, you know, the listing company, the the Airbnb, the Verbo, and all the other ones, I think, uh, Home Away, I think, is another one that does it. So it would be able to, you would be able to find them. In addition to that, you would also be able to find the if, if if the village decided to issue a ticket to that person, they would also be able to find the listing person. So whoever is the owner of the property that has put it on the listing, as well as finding the person renting it. Now, if if the village discovers that 
you know, through, you know, searches through these websites, if the village discovers that a listing company has listed it and it has not been rented yet, they can find that listing company and hopefully get or at least contact that listing company first and say, remove it because this ordinance, if it's approved in its entirety with the amendment, would be sent out to all these companies to let them know you can't do this anymore in the village of Dalton. And there's other communities that they will not list for because those communities have passed prohibitive ordinances. But for some reason, they continue to list. So maybe seeing a higher fine will make them say, you know what, we're not going to it's not worth the business. It's not worth the the thousand dollars that we might get. It's not worth the few hundred dollars we might get. So maybe they won't even put the listing on there, which then the problem cures itself. So I think the goal is really to, I mean, you know, I don't want to say that the village is not going to go after people that list it and the, the village is not going to go after the people that rent it because they are still in violation of the code. But the goal is really to go after the listing companies to get them to stop listing it. And once you get them to stop listing it, you cure the underlying problem. Got it. So, and this is just prior to my vote, because I know you stated that we can do three people, right? I guess my question is, do we have, like, at this moment, who, are we going to find all three people? Um, is there a plan? Do we just find one person in the beginning, just the owner or just a lister? Or how does that work? What's the process in regards to are we charging all three of them the $3,000 fine or are we first trying to, to contact the host, find them? The host then group. if all fails, then our plan Correct. is to find a list. Correct. Yes. That's yes. correct. Yeah. So okay. it, I think it really depends on which step in the process they get yes, caught they violating yeah. the law. Yeah. If it's if they're caught violating the law when the listing is just on the listing company's website, then it's the listing company that, that the village is going to go after. If it's already after, you know, if it's already gone, the party's going on. And, you know, the police have to come and issue a violation there or we find about it thereafter and, and violation has to be issued thereafter. Then, yes, it would be all three if we're able to discover who all the parties are, because that's another challenge in it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't always determine who the renting party is. You know, you think about it. You go to a party, you know, I'm sure that, you know, Chief Collins can attest to this. You go to a party and all of a sudden, especially if it's an illegal party, there's illegal stuff going on. Everyone scatters mm -hmm. and you don't know who's who. That person already paid the fee. They're gone. They don't care. They, they, they've gone back to their house in whatever suburb or city they live in. You know, so they don't care. But if you're able to get the company first, then you prevent the underlying listing. If it gets through, then you still have the ability to go after all the responsible parties. Thank you. That was clear. You're welcome. Okay. 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 Call the row, uh, Clark. <laughs> what, what was the price? What was the price? Okay. And this is what three, right? three, for yeah, We have the three? Three thousand. Ah, yeah. Okay. And so motion. when you get uh, to the second offense, yeah, will it be ten thousand? That's the question. That is another question because that is in the ordinance. I think that's something you got amended with them. Yeah, so so you should do a motion to um a motion to amend the ordinance as presented to $3,000 for the initial fine and has the board determined what the second fine would be? So you want it to double? Y'all want it I, to double? Or? I think at the moment until I figure out a plan and figure out how this thing is going and how we contact who I'm okay with the three and then maybe you all can let me know a plan later saying, hey, we contact the Airbnb, we'll be finding them, then I'll be uh, more willing to, mm -hmm. well, to yes. raise it or consider raising it. So I'm, if, that's my plan. Whatever she come up with, I'm all for it. Got if, 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 if I mean, I mean the compromise <laughs> is cool for me. I like the fact that the mayor decided to compromise. I'm, I'm with it. If, if, if I may make a suggestion, um, if you amend the first fine to $3,000, then the second fine is $2,500. It's not really congruent. That doesn't yeah, so it gotta be like kind of match grand. up. So you kind of got to increase like the second fine either to six, six, mm -hmm. six or 4500 six. 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 six for the second offense. $6, now so say ten thousand right now. So so that would that would be doubling it. Correct. Okay. So I mean, because by that time it's like you already know that you did wrong, and so you know you don't want to give somebody a you know a break because they did it wrong a second time. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. All right. So it's no longer a thousand. It's three thousand. Right. Three thousand. Yeah. So gotcha. them, okay. Yeah. Trustee Norwood. I mean, Aye. Wait. I'm I'm sorry, Madam Clerk. First, we need the motion to amend the ordinance. Uh, yes, yeah, to, to, yeah, to motion? amend it to 3,000 and 6,000. Okay, so okay. rule motion, and I'll then second. you want to amend your second? Whoever made the second, I'll, I'll second. second. Okay, homes and brown, I mean, house. Okay, homes and house. 
<laughs> Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stan Brown. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Okay, motion passed. All right. To amend this ordinance. And then All you'll right. need to do a motion to approve the amended ordinance. Just real quick, sorry. <laughs> yes, motion to approve the amended ordinance. All right. It, it, so, same people, y'all want a motion? Motion. Um, House. A motion to approve the amended the amendment. Yes. Aye. Are you moving? <laughs> Get off the phone. <laughs> Okay, Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stan Brown. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Motion passed. All right. All right. Um, next on agenda is the um, is there a motion um, to approve ordinance twenty three dash amending section section of chapter ten title four of the village code regarding plants and weeds. So this was put on the agenda regarding um, the railroad, something I just discussed. So I, I know we made this ordinance, uh, like I said, right <laughs> when I became mayor. So now we're amending it to add other parcels. That's it. We're leaving everything the same. We just want to add other parcels that the railroad owns and that other private owners own. Uh, for instance, there's something on 146 and uh, Harper, Harvard, Harvard, and then there's several other parcels that's listed in the package that's industrial that's growing up into forests. Uh, especially over there in Presidents where a lot of you guys complain about that is right by the railroad. The railroad owns that, unfortunately, and I know they have not been out to cut it. PW, I thank you guys. You guys always go out and trim it and maintenance it, but right now we're asking to add those parcels to an already existing ordinance. So, is there a motion? A motion. Is there a second? Second. There a motion and second. Any discussion? Yes. I have a discussion okay. now. Go ahead. Um, so I know you said that we are amending this motion. So I take it that this is the same motion that we voted on pre at the previous meeting in regards to increasing the fines to five hundred dollars. No, this is the railroad motion. Just the railroad. Which was about two years ago. Okay. And basically what I did was added it onto the agenda. Everyone voted for it to basically increase the fines to ten thousand well, dollars. I remember that. Okay. So once we did that, they got some act right okay. and they cut everything down 144th in Indiana. Now we're asking for them to cut all their parcels throughout our community. Gotcha. It's several different locations. Um, I know housing, TIFF, meaning attorney, I'm sorry, attorney, <laughs> <laughs> attorney, um, she uh, went and they looked everything up and they added the parcels in the ordinance. Okay. So now that everybody that has high grass will get ticketed, get fined. But these only people that got like big old lots, like uh, uh, railroad. Okay. I just want to make sure it wasn't for the residents. It wasn't an increase. Okay. Oh, and then, yeah, and that's in there, too, for the $500. She said it's consistent. Yeah, the, 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 if it goes, you look under 4-10-7A, uh, that's on page 3 of the draft ordinance, it does make it consistent with the ordinance that you guys previously approved. Got it. And I guess that's that's why I'm asking for clarity, because I, I was okay with increasing it to $500. I guess my only concern is that I'm okay with adding the railroad. If this is just strictly adding the railroad, I'm fine with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. My concern was just making sure that this is not for the resident. Is no, 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 this and, and and this is consistent again with the fine that was uh, already not, previously our, approved. Yes, the this is strictly meeting. industrial railroads and a parcel. They put every parcel in the ordinance. Perfect. That's Thank it. you, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. it's real bad right there, 150 to 153rd in Beachview. Behind there is terrible. No, I'm okay. I mean, Trustee Brown. I I rode around with Trustee Brown to see some of the. The locations that had higher grass, so I'm okay with that. I just want to make sure it wasn't geared towards the residents prior to me voting. All right, call, can you please call, call her up? Trustee Norwood, aye, Trustee Stan Brown, aye, Trustee Tammy Brown, aye, Trustee House, aye, Trustee Holmes, aye. Motion passed. All right, um, uh, next on the agenda, um, is there a motion for approval resolution 23 dash? Authorizing and approving the collective bargaining agreement between the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees AFL-CIO Council 31 in the Village of Dalton, Cook, uh, County of Cook, State of Illinois. So, uh, wait, let me get the motion. Is, is there a motion? A motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been motion and second. Um, 
the reason why we put this on the agenda, this is for PW Public Works. This is their contract, which has been long overdue. Um, this was during the rally administration. Uh, eight years they went without a new contract. So uh, I am thankful and proud to announce that I do believe that myself and the board of trustees will make you guys whole. Uh, we got through the negotiations, and I just stated before that we have a second shift now. So I want you guys to be weary of that uh, community, meaning residents. If you see something such as branches, a tree need trim, anything like that, it's a second shift on duty. So if you call Public Works, we will come out and aid and assist. But um, I'm thankful just to get to this part of this um, movement, which is making sure that we have a contract for you guys to go. And I want to thank Attorney Tiffany Nelson for doing an awesome, awesome job. Um, thank you for just getting us here. Um, but believe it or not, just so residents understand how money go. Um, it's a lot of money that we owe them. <laughs> So I want to just put that out there for the record because we have to give them back pay. John, John, it's for you, baby. Uh, we have to give them back pay. Uh, we do not have that right now. So let me make sure people understand how this works. When I say we have money, we have money to operate the village, to pay, do payroll, to do your services of anything you ask of us. But as it relates to contracts, that can be a million to $5 million. We don't have money like that just sitting around to pay right now and give to uh, anybody from the police uh, bargaining unit to the fire uh, unit. I know it's two different contracts that we have to pay out. And that's another thing to answer the trustee house's question. When we do have to take out bonds or things of that nature, we will have to make them whole eventually. And we don't have that type of reserve sitting, but we have reserves to do day to day, to live, to make sure you're okay, to make Make sure the light's not off, the water not cut off. We have those type of reserves, but not a reserve to pay y'all contract out right away. Um, I know in the agreement it says 90 days. I'm telling you out of my mouth, we will need longer than 90 days to uh, give you back pay, um, meaning public works. So I just want to make that clear, put that for the record, let trustees know that, let everyone know that so that people know what's going on. Um, any discussion? Yes. Question? Sure. sure. Is it eight years or four years? Four. Okay, four years. I said four, four what? Four years retro, correct? But this tip, Timmy gonna explain it all. So I was gonna let her talk. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So she gonna explain okay. how she did the whole contract. Okay. So. Oh, yes, yeah, thank you. you. Uh, yeah, so this contract, um, as I'm sure you guys all know, the contract, <clears throat> the public works and pretty much every other bargaining in it has yeah. been without a contract since at least uh, 2020. And prior to that, I think it took even, you know, th that was a long time in between negotiations for that too. So... Essentially, you guys have been without a contract for four years. So what this does is this settles a lot of the issues with the contract. It creates the second shift, which was something that was very near and dear to the mayor's heart. And it has allowed uh, her administration to provide additional services to the residents. But what the contract also does is it makes the public works guys whole as it relates to their, their back pay. So for four years, they didn't get any sort of increase and they've patiently waited and and now we've got to a point where we've hopefully got a contract that the board will approve. Now, the pub, we have been in discussions with the Public Works Union regarding the payments of back pay. And it's, we've been very clear that there's some difficulties as it relates to the payment of back pay. So we're looking at when that's going to be able to be paid. Can't give a you know firm estimate right now, but we're looking at when that is going to be paid. But on the whole, I feel that this is a very fair contract. Uh, the wage increases are not terribly high. They're within reason. And the only reason for the, um, I guess, large expenditure on back pay is the fact that this contract has been expired for four years and nothing was done. And my understanding from speaking to, I've been negotiating all of the, the village's collective bargaining agreements. And my understanding is that before the prior administration, that they wouldn't even come to the table and talk to them correct, and would even correct. hold the negotiation sessions. Correct. So we had to come in and really develop a good relationship with the union and a relationship of credibility. And that's why we're being crystal clear about, you know, the village does have some challenges in sort of funding things that should have been funded four years ago. Um, I, I do have a, a question. Um, I, Mayor, I heard you say that it, it'll, it won't be the next 90 days. Correct. Um, and I heard the attorney state that we have an idea of an estimate. No, I, I said we're working out an idea on an estimate. We, we, we've got some ideas, but that's not something that I can actually, because that's still a, mad, a matter of negotiations as it relates to, you know, negotiating that item with the union. So that wouldn't be really something that I would be comfortable talking about in the public venue. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. I just want to, I, I was just wondering only because I know that it'll be negotiation time again sometime in April. So we want to make sure, you know, in regards to it being retro and us agreeing to pay this out. Right. That, okay. Another one will be do so, so. Well, well, the hope is that honestly, that we'll get back to the bargaining table pretty quickly. I mean, honestly, we'll probably be back at the bargaining table okay. in a few months. Okay. And the hope is that we settle the next contract timely so that the retro check Hopefully there is no retro check, period. Mm -hmm. And if there is a retro check, that it's small, that it's not four years of retro. Most communities don't get saddled with a four-year retro payment right. at, for five bargaining units. I mean, think about that. You've got five different bargaining units, and it's five people that you've got to back pay for four years. That's a lot of money. Nobody, you know, and that wasn't budgeted for in the prior years. So this is a lot of catch-up that this administration is, is trying to do. And, you know, so. Well, thank you, attorney. I think you cleared, you um, answered the questions for me. I mean, public works definitely deserve it. So I just yeah. wanted to know about if we had an idea. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Well, thank you, Callie. No and problem. I, and I'd just like to say, um, uh, public works, uh, thanks for not giving up right. on us, uh, hanging in there. And I must just say this here from an old Chinese proverb, not here from a young lady. We love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Thank you, Public Works. Yeah, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Can um, I be recognized, Mayor? Sure, go ahead. Um, I kind of want to echo some of Trustee Stan Brown's sentiments in terms of the job. Or thank, but thanks to Public Works, I do think this is uh, long overdue. Um, as we come to discussing the money, and I do. Um, I, I, like, do we have an idea what this figure, because I know we have the percentages in there, so what that amount of back pay is? And I haven't heard kind of, I heard there's some plans being formed, but not so much on when, because, um, I mean, I think this paperwork would be great, but I mean, um, a check into the bank, even if it's um, over time, would be even better. So do we have an idea what that amount is? Yeah, so that's something that, of course, you know, we need to talk in closed session about. That's not that we talk in a public so if that's something that you want to discuss or discuss after the meeting, we can. Well, and I'm I'm asking that because we're in we're actually we're voting in the public. The amounts are the at least percentages are down there. No, you so asked about how out. we going to pay out, what we're gonna do. That's what Tiffany or uh, attorney <laughs> the attorney just said um, as it relates to getting a plan together. Because right now she's talking to their attorney and the union stewards. I don't know if that's John over there as it relates to that because we talked about several ways of paying it out we talked to them about um april for payout we talked to them about 90 days for payout we talked to them about several different things so right now they are talking that's why she said they are still in negotiation and and if i may we are you know the village is evaluating all options i don't know what the solid number is on the the total amount of back pay owed that would be a question that i certainly could not answer however what i can tell you is that the raises once this gets approved, assuming it does get approved, the raises will kick into effect. So everybody that is, yeah, you know, they're, they're going to get a higher salary. Right. So in the very least, the bargaining unit is going to get their higher salary. And believe me, when they see their higher checks, that's going to make them very happy. Right. Of course, when they get that back pay check, they're going to be even happier. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we got to take things one step at a time. <laughs> And, and right. the, and the that answers my questions. Thank you. Uh, uh, just last thing, prior to me voting, um, I heard you state that you you all will get us an amount, though. I mean, prior to me voting, you all will get us an amount when you calculate everything. I know you say you don't want to say it in front of the public, but will you all be able to share that information with? I mean, we, we can once once we figure out. I, I mean, that's the the amount is with the finance department. As a lawyer, I should not do math. <laughs> And I will not do math. <laughs> I will do some math, but not that level of math. <laughs> so I wouldn't want to give you an estimate because I would completely screw it up. So, but I can I can tell you what once once we are able to figure out the when, that is likely either we're just going to you know come to an agreement or we'll probably probably end up having some sort of memorandum of understanding or something that's going to come Correct. before the board. Correct. So we'll have something in writing. For the board to vote on so the board will know when the payment plan whatever it is it gets approved uh, but the union is fully aware of this issue we've been talking for the last few weeks and you know they they they, they just want the contract approved <laughs> okay thank you attorney you cleared that up for me all right clerk, you're welcome. 
Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stan Brown. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Aye. Public Works, we love y'all. All right, who banned lunch now? All right, the Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, next on the agenda is Mayor's report. So I'm gonna be brief this evening because this was a really decent meeting. So I just want to talk to you guys about a couple past events. Um, one is the back to school event. We just had this this Saturday. It was a huge success. Over 3,000 residents showed up. Um, they received book bags, which are clear. Or I'm real big on safety. Remember that. So clear see-through book bags so that if a kid has a weapon or something in their book bag, hopefully the parents take notice or someone in the school sees it before it becomes an issue. Because so I know y'all heard about what happened in South Holland at the daycare. The kid bought the gun to the daycare. Uh, thank God no one was hurt. But I just want to point out things that do happen. So we try to be... Um, um, proactive before things hit our community. So again, if anybody are needing a book bag or in supplies, please call me at 708-297-6859. Again, that cell number is 708-297-6859 to receive anything um, that you need for your kids' school. Also, if you need food boxes, you can call me as well. We will bring one to your home or you can go to our food pantry that's located in Harvey. Uh, upcoming events this Saturday, we're having our house head fast with DJ Farley. When I say last year it was so epic, everyone loved it. Y'all had fun, and uh, what I love about it is it's an older crowd. And I, man, y'all got a ton of energy. Y'all do not stop, like literally all night long. So it's going down right there in Melly Fitness uh, parking lot. It will be going on from 12 until 9 p.m. Um, you, if you are interested in attending, please register on Thornton Township website. Um, also, that same weekend, um, we have a comedy show, and that will be on, um, I, don't, I don't think the time's right, it got 6 to 9. That will be Sunday. It's after church. Um, I believe it starts at 2, but right now it's at 6, but I think it's 2 p.m. until 9 p.m. Also housed in Melly Fitness parking lot, and that's also housed or uh, hosted by Thornton Township, where I'm your supervisor at. So please um, go there to apply or register for that um, before seats fill up. Um, after school program at Thornton Township. I'm telling you guys all about this because a lot of times people don't know what Thornton Township actually does. Um, if you are interested in your kid getting out of school, need help with math, reading, things of that nature, need a tutor, we offer that for free at the township at our Riverdale location. If you are interested, grade second and up, um, we will have transportation, pick your kid up from your school or his school, her school, and we will bring them to our building, which is the Riverdale location on Halstead. And we will keep them from three to six. Now, I remind you, three to six, because we ain't no daycare. Three to six, we're going to help your baby, but come get your baby now. Um, <laughs> three to six o'clock. Uh, township residents only, and it is free. Free, 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 free. I can't stress that enough. Free. Um, apply online at Youth and Family Services. That's the um, link that you will hit the drop link down, and you will pre-register and select the information that you need to put in to make sure your kid get extra help. Uh, mental health, I can't stress that enough. If you are in need of that, please attend our Kirby Rehabilitation Center, which is at our old village hall on 140th and Park. Um, that is also free to our residents in Dalton um, because half the time people don't know what you go through, um, but they think that you're not human. You are human. Um, things break you down, whether it's losing a loved one, going through something personal yourself, losing a child, anything like that. But please just reach out and get the help because it's truly, truly needed throughout our communities. Uh, mental health will be back up um, on the ballot. A lot of you guys asked me about it because, as y'all see now, it's needed. And you watch the news a lot that you see that those that was telling y'all not to vote for it, that you should have voted for it because right now everyone needed throughout the 17 cities that Thorn Township housed. So I want to put that out there so you're aware of it. Just Ice Rink, um, the roller rink slash ice rink that was built right around the corner on Greenwood Falls. We are hiring for someone to manage the site because we're about to open. So if you are interested or know someone that's interested in that um in managing that site, please apply here at Village Hall. You can see Larry or Miss Linda at the front desk, get an application and put um, position management of 
uh, the ice rink, and that will manage our site. That means you're responsible for booking events, the um, back to school stuff, things like that at that site because we get a lot of kids, believe it or not. I don't know if you guys go down that strip on your way home. You see kids out there dancing. They had a whole dance competition out there the other day that we just drove up on. They had dance practice um, and also kids practice roller skating. So go out there, check it out. It's a whole lot of fun. But if you're interested, come to Village Hall and apply. Roof and window program. Um, a lot of people reached out about this. This is for, about to start. The problem that we was having in the past, and we still have it currently, is we're looking for vendors. If you are a vendor that can do the work, um, understand it is a cap. Last year we had two thousand dollar cap on windows, and then we had a five thousand dollar cap on. Um, roofs. So if you are interested and you know that you can do the work, because it's a lot of residents, guys, this ain't no, uh, I can do eight other jobs plus the village, because we want our people to get the same customer service that you're giving to your to your residents or your customers. Uh, please apply, sign up, make sure you are licensed and bonded with us, the village, before you can do the work. And then, of course, we check the work. You do not get paid until you complete the job, so you got to be able to fund your own supplies, your own windows, things of that nature. And then when you're done, you go up before this board on the warrant list, and then they approve the check, and then they sign the check, and then you get the money released to you. I just want you to be aware of how the process works. Um, again, we are still starting with the veterans and the seniors that signed up, and then we will get that list down. Stay tuned for things to go up on our social media and our VIA website. Another thing that I want you guys to be aware of is uh, FEMA. The issue that we had with the, the storm, when I say the storm came and it just took the top of our water uh, reserve in the back of the old village hall, and it's literally, it has no top on it currently. So we lost all that water. So all that money that we paid city of Chicago for water to put in our reserve tanks, it's just sitting there, which we cannot utilize. What I am thankful for is that um, God always find something positive in any disaster is the way I look at life, right? And the reason why I say that is normally we will have been feeding our town with that water, meaning you all are hooked up and it come from that reservoir. At that moment, on that day, at that particular time, it was not. So I did not have to send out a boil order to the residents to tell you not to drink the water, to boil your water. I didn't have to do any of that. So that's what I mean by my blessing in disguise. Now don't get me wrong, old infrastructure, over 30, 50 years or so, it's crumbling. It needs to be fixed. That's happened throughout the whole entire soft land. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> it's happening throughout the whole entire soft land. And with that being said, what I love about Tony Preckwinkle, Tony Preckwinkle, Madam, Madam President, if you're listening, I appreciate you. I love the fact that once I called her, she picked the phone up, sleepy and all, and answered, and she sent her people here like that. And that's what I loved about it. It was here within 45 minutes of me putting out the SOS call for help from our Cook County um, officials. Um, they came out. They was really, really strategic with planning. Uh, they said with myself, village administrator, uh, director, Stacy Corral. Uh, public works, everybody was out there, even run the engineer. Everybody was out there. It was all hands on deck, including Calumet City Plumbing. It was a long, long night because I got the call about 1 a.m. in the morning, and Stacy said <laughs> something blew up. Like, man, the, 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 the building blew up. I'm like, the building blew up. He's like, get here now. I'm like, okay. So I get my baby ready now just to sleep. So I put her in the car. We come flying here, and just to see um, the, the hood off the tank which is unbelievable. But when I say that, I cannot say how thankful I am for just uh, teamwork, um, making things move for our community. And they stayed with us until we got into the safety zone of making sure the residents knew that everything was safe. Because we was dealing with that for literally about 10 hours before we actually could talk to the public about what had transpired. I then made a Facebook Live. I explained to everybody what was going on. Because, you know, everybody that just like to keep a mess, keep some mess, uh, telling residents the opposite of what we are saying. And ain't no way, just so y'all hear from me, that I'm going to tell y'all so something um, 
it's not wrong with the water if something's not wrong with the water. Like, I would never do y'all like that. Believe it or not, my family lives in this community too. I have to be safe for everyone. And I will always make sure I put you guys first and I always tell y'all the truth as it relates to our infrastructure, our water, our money situation. We always being, as they like to call it, transparent with the people, with the public. Uh, I see us battle and bickering and go back and forth. But at the end of the day, I just want y'all to know that I love y'all. I really do. I actually give up my whole life just to build up Dalton because I grew here as I always say and they flew here so I'm gonna fix it before I actually ever exit or do something bigger because oh, I'm doing something bigger but before I ever leave my community because I gotta leave my my baby here as well shoot my grandma her grandma here so I gotta make sure I fix this community uh for my baby your kids our loved ones because somebody has to care now I know in the past um you guys have had dealt with a lot of neglect so when people stand up I take that to heart when that gentleman stood up and said my administration don't do none what you mean my administration does it all they were super mayor what you talking about uh one when there's a, a wheel there's a way that's my wheel down there so what I will say is uh I love the fact that public works uh works non-stop I love the fact that they are clean clearing the blocks for you we're going down and we're trimming the trees we're making it light up we're showing you what you mean to us when you've been complaining about it before I got here Remember, it didn't happen like this overnight, so it ain't going to get fixed overnight. Y'all yeah, been complaining, uh, I, mean, I don't even know how far to go back, but about 20 years about all the neglect. So now we're fixing it. Give us the opportunity to fix it. And I know you see us fixing it, but guess what? In fixing it, it costs money. So now it's time for us to say, residents, y'all got away for so long for not doing things the right way. So now when we try to tell y'all the right way, y'all look at us as we're telling you something wrong. All we're doing is telling you what laws are on the books, what things we need to implement, change or fix. And I understand change is hard. Change is difficult, but change is necessary if we want our town to look like the next town. If we want people to come and patronize our town like we do when we go out on the weekend, where y'all go? Orland, Tinley, where y'all go? Bolingbrook, Evergreen Plaza, where y'all go? There ain't no plaza no more. But where y'all go? Y'all go to all these places because I do the same. But all I'm saying to you guys is why can't we build and fix the same things we're running to in our own backyard? All I can do is show you, and I think I've shown you your work as it relates as your mayor, because I tell this to anybody. No man is going to get mad here. Let a woman run it, and I'm going to show y'all what we're going to do. We gonna fix it. We're the band-aid, we're the glue, we the who's who, we the backbone of the community, whether you wanna say it or not. And I understand a lot of men wanna say that, hey, it, it's their way of the highway, but right now women are running things. I just wish you guys will uh, grow with me because we gonna go through things, but I need you to grow through it as well. Because at the end of the day, I'm somebody's loved one, someone's mom, someone's auntie, just like how you want your daughter, your loan will wanna be treated, that's how y'all should want for me. because. At the end of the day, this is a tough role to be filled based off the neglect over 30, 50 years. So now that y'all see what we're capable of, I think you guys should give us the opportunity to continue to fix it without, without all the laments. Keep that over there. Because as you know, life is short. Life is not promised to anybody. You guys see people dropping like flies left to right. Healthy people that run every day, eat healthy, talking about they're vegan, and, and they, they gone. So all I can tell you is love on each other. And that's why I tell you, call your neighbor. Turn to that neighbor. Say, neighbor, I love you. We're going to do that real quick. Turn to your late neighbor. <laughs> say, neighbor, I love you. That's what I'm talking about in the back. And ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> So that's what we represent. We represent love in my village because right now that's what the neglect comes from. Nobody loving on each other. You got some people that's living in community don't even know what love is. So that's what I do as your super mayor. I go to the door and I love on everybody and I let them know that we are here for them. Like they say, it takes a village to raise a family, meaning the kid, the teenagers, the people that you see running around. And guess what, guys? Stop beating up on them so bad. Y'all was teenagers once before. I understand everybody got the same household or parents, but it's all about you 
reaching out to that kid saying, hey, it's okay. You're going to make mistakes. How did any of us ever learn? You learn from trial and error. I use the example all the time. Any of y'all work at McDonald's or Wendy's or any fast food spot, y'all done burnt their fries and messed up that bread. Person mad, right? The customer mad at you for messing that food up. But did you get fired? No, you didn't get fired. They kept you there and you messed up again the next day. This time you burnt the cheeseburger. But I'm just saying to you, give people the opportunity to make it right. Give the kids the opportunity to grow because somebody got to give them the resume. They don't have a resume because y'all won't give them experience. You won't get an opportunity to learn, or unfortunately, on your dime. And that's why I'm real big on the youth because somebody had to give me my opportunity to, to actually start Good Burger, to grow my business. Because anybody that know me, I started from the bottom, now I'm here. So anybody that know how this game go, you have to give people that really want to do the work the opportunity. And right now, that's our youth. No matter what y'all say or think or believe, we are, are young, we are ambitious, we are courageous, and we're going to stand in the fire for any of you. And y'all know that. So if y'all need me, y'all come and get me because you know I'm going to be one band, one sound with everybody in my community. But I just wanted y'all to hear from me what happened with the water crisis in our village. And uh, we're working on that now. Later on down the road, we will have to take a bond out. That's why I was telling Trustee House, because right now that project is estimated to be $5 million. Um, I know Stacy Carrera have been talking to different people that have been flying in, and they flying in, so you know it's big, because they have to uh, build that same top, which is made of concrete, which is the best top to have. <clears throat> Just the best top to have over the, the water. So that's going to cost a sets of $5 million. And then also the other tank is um, on its last limb as well. So I'm just telling you guys the truth of what's to come. So once you see it, you're not afraid of it. You understand the whys. And then also the estimated readings that a lot of people spoke about. Um, that's been going on for years. I was a trustee for eight years, and it was the same thing, estimated readings. Right now, we need digital meetings in our community. I know that we are working on a plan. We more than like going to put it on the next agenda as it relates to digital meters. And we're going to do it in segments, just so people are aware. Because I want you to call and say, well, why you ain't do my side? We might start on the west side of town, and then we'll do the whole entire west side of town with digital meters. And then we'll get a game plan together and make sure that works without no issues. And if there is any kinks, you have to just be patient with us we have fixed the kinks so when we go to the east side of town that we can just move move um, smoothly with no issues i just want you to know the plan from your mayor of what is coming down the pipeline for our community fema that's something that i did once we had that disaster on july 2nd and also july 28th i did a proclamation for our community meaning dalton and i made our community a national disaster with that being said we reached out to the governor's office and the president's office and now currently we're waiting on the president to sign because i believe the pre the governor signed right Keith? the governor signed already so the, the disaster release for our community so if you are struggling and you had a flood issue with that big old storm um make sure you go online which it will be up by thursday so y'all ain't got to call tomorrow they ain't up tomorrow the form will be up by thursday but you can fill it out and it's for fema so once the funds get released uh, i want our community to be the first ones to receive the funds so we've been in talks with them um as it relates to what what to do our next steps we talks with uh, Cook County. Uh, everyone knows about it. So they said that we could put the information out for you guys and that about two weeks and probably 30 days, I don't ever think two weeks, uh, 30 to 60 days, uh, you will see that come down the pipeline where you can sign up with FEMA and get funds to uh, rebuild your flooded basements due to the flood. So that will be there. All you need is your name, phone number, address, uh, what happened in your property. Like if your basement flooded, you lost your couch, you got a bedroom down there or whatever the case may be, you write that in there and then someone will contact you from FEMA um, as it relates to the next steps or getting money. Because I know FEMA pays you directly. They do not pay the village. We will not get the money. It will go directly to the resident. So I just wanted you to know the things that I'm doing for you. A um, couple other things, and then I'm done, which is tree trimming. I know I announced that earlier. Maria announced it. We did the east side. Um, everyone's happy over there because now they can see down the block, literally down the block. Um, tree trimming was done there, and now we're on the west side of town, and that's from Airbrook all the way to Wentworth. We're on that side cutting down trees and trimming trees. If you are in need of a tree trim or a cut down, please call Public Works. Stacy, you can tell them that number. What's your number, Public Works? 
So call that number if you need to get on the list uh, as relates to a tree trim. We're also, as we're cutting, we're noticing what we need to brighten certain areas up. Stacy has been doing about 10 poles a week um, ordering, and whenever me comes out with the poles, then we put them up. Some people are getting their center blocks in um, so that they can lay the foundation to put the pole up. So you'll see that as well throughout the community. Another thing we're doing is beautification. If you think you got the best um, house on the block, please reach out to us because we have uh, Mayor Henry's Beautification Awards. So let us know because we like to basically give you your flowers while you're here and tell you thank you for caring so much about your home because uh, lawn care is very expensive to maintain and keep up, but we thank you for just showing people when they do move to our town that we do have the best lawns uh, in the soft land, I'm going to say that. Uh, next is the streets, alleys, and sidewalks. As you know, Ron Engineer just announced the streets that are about to get done. We do this every single year, but no, we have a limited budget with that. But that's something else that they can write into the bun when we do the bun. They can write adding everybody's street in Dalton in the bun. Uh, alleys as well. That's something that never has been done until I start doing it as mayor. Because we get a lot of complaints about they can't get down their alley. It's too many potholes, so we're doing that. Sidewalks, for those that have been here as long as I have. When someone called about a sidewalk, did y'all know we had the 50-50 program? Right now, today, I do it for free. I don't think a resident should have to pay for services that you should get once you buy a house in Dalton. Just like you do when you buy an oil in Tinley. Y'all don't pay 50-50 for that <coughs> sidewalk. So why should you have to do it in the village of Dalton? So back then, you had to pay 50%. If it's $1,000, you pay 500 And the village paid the other 500 Right now, today, when y'all call me with a complaint about a sidewalk that's lifted up by the roots because of a tree, uh, we come and we repair it for free because I feel that services that come with you living in the village of Dalton. So I want you to know about that. Uh, other projects we're working on, uh, Ron Engineering this is as well. So if you want to listen, I'm just reiterating it. Uh, sewer project, that's the $1 million. Anybody know this about me? I go get the money. Despite what you hear about me, I go get the money and bring it back for you. So the million dollar project, we will be doing the west side of town. And the reason why we're starting over there is because that's the one side that I always say we never start with them first. So we're starting with them first, and then we're going to make our way throughout the rest of the community. We also um, got allocated the $6.8 million. So we're going to add that in the budget. So when you see the budget, it will be a surplus. Uh, because everybody keeps talking about deficit is deficit debt. No, it would be a surplus because you got $6.8 million coming. Um, we working on that now on when and how because people always tell us that, right? But I'm coming from the show me the money state. Like show us the money in the village of Dalton. Once we allocate the funds, um, once they did in, in Springfield, uh, the governor signed off on things. I want us to see the funds so now the residents can benefit from it. You already have a roof and window program here for grant. We're going to do other things for you too like your driveways for free. We're going to do um, oh, the security doors for you. And then we're also going to do a gate or a fence. So if you're a resident of Dalton, and this will be for anybody, because I normally start with the seniors and veterans first, that's you first. But then after that, it's the middle class people too. But you must, let me repeat, you must own your home. It cannot be a rental property. We do not fix rental property. This is strictly for homeowners, people that's really invested in the community. I just want you to know that these things exist for you. I don't get the money to bring you back and give it to the people. That's the problem a lot of people got with me. They never put you first, but I do. So I want you to benefit from things that you should benefit from because other communities that's really thriving get certain things like that, but not, not the black and brown communities. So my job is to make sure that you get your piece of the pie as well. So I thank y'all for coming out. I thank y'all for listening. I hope I see y'all this Saturday at the House of Fest. If not, um, I love y'all. Nothing y'all can do about it. Is there a motion to adjourn? A motion. Is there a second? second. There a motion and second. Please call the roll. Oh, yes. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stan Brown. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Motion passed. Meeting adjourned at 9.15 p.m. All right. Good night, everybody. All right. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Lovely.